I wait 10 minutes to see Bob's butt. That's what Dan said. And that's a dangerous thing right now. Yeah. Thanks, Dad. Thanks for being here right at yeah. the top of the show. Appreciate we're, it. Yeah. Hello. We're here. Hi. I'm hey. back from PAX. How you doing? Good to see yeah. everybody. Uh, well, I streamed last night, so I guess they saw me. Yeah. Uh, Will, how you doing? I'm good. I um, Now, Bob, you're white. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> but you're not one of those white no people. No one told me. You're not one of those white people who listened to cereal back in the day, right? No. That everybody, I, I, I worked in an office at that time, and everybody was listening to it. Because they were all white. Because they were all white. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, so Actually, was- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> the 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 guy who the first season of Serial was the subject of okay uh you know the whole if you don't know if you're not white uh Serial <laughs> was about it was a podcast about uh Sarah Canning a journalist trying to find evidence that this one guy uh Anand Syed was wrongfully accused of murdering his girlfriend and was okay. imprisoned uh wrongly uh he has since been had the conviction overturned in part thanks to Serial. Um, and he was released. However, now it looks like he's under arrest again for the same thing. <laughs> for for wait, oh, for doing it again? Yeah, murder conviction. You can't ha- be, you murder can't conviction be... has been reinstated. Is the headline? Wait, you can't do that. Uh, I thought once you're acquitted, that's it. That's I, OJ. It's the OJ thing. Yeah, um, I didn't get a chance because I just clicked it right as like the the little intro went live, so I didn't get a chance to read it, but. Rest assured, as a white person, this concerns me greatly because <laughs> I was a fan of Serial Season One, and only Serial Season One. No, I I was not. I was I was not doing that. I was listening to video game podcasts. At the time. You know why? Because my girlfriend at the time, now wife, we were going on a road trip and we needed something to listen to. Mm-hmm. And as two white people, we're like, "Hey, I've heard this serial thing is kind of interesting," so we listened to that. No, as a white guy, I listened to the kind of funny podcast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, white people uh, Lame. <laughs> hello i don't have my stream labs open um oh. i i just sat down uh but special thank you to uh no banana suits for the 35 months wow buy yourself something nice thanks dude thank you. uh kirsch kirschner's K- K- jake thanks for the prime and it's garrick thanks for the prime uh hey we got some things to talk about we got a reveal of the the tears of the kingdom uh yes. gameplay finally yeah some actual gameplay it, similar but different <laughs> there's other things we got to talk about like f- oh i'm not talking we got to talk about the 3ds eShop going down and what it broke yes i made a list of things that broke because of the the 3ds eShop went down okay uh not really a lot of news about the wii u eShop, but i'd imagine no. that broke some stuff too yeah i feel like nobody really cared about the wii u eShop. i certainly don't yeah uh and some other stuff let's uh, yeah. uh e3 might not happen anymore before we get into any of that stuff i have to address something that happened last week yes um no i'm not apologizing for anything <laughs> i haven't been canceled yet don't worry yet. We'll find um something. Last week there was a comment that I forgot to pull up, but I want we, we we read it at the very end, uh, and I was kind of caught off guard because I had no uh, uh, proof of of my stance. Um, Lied on Gavin last week said there actually is GBA hardware inside the 3DS. The Ambassador Games run it from that hardware. People have hacked the 3DS, uh, have hacked 3DSs, use a program in to inject ROMs into the virtual console or use open AGB firm, which is firmware, Mm -hmm. to utilize the hardware. Uh, MGBA is Garbo because it's a software emulation. Uh, I know this isn't true (laughs) (laughs) because there is no Game Boy Advance hardware in the 3DS. This is a common misconception because uh, the 3DS has DS hardware. The DS has GBA hardware. So... You'd think that if the 3DS has DS hardware, then it must have GBA hardware. Correct. Because the DS had GBA hardware. Yes. That is just not true. They removed the 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 GBA hardware when they put the DS into the 3DS. It was. It's, not it's not a little removing, confusing. It's not just removing the cartridge slot from the DS hardware. It's like removing the actual chipset and all the other bric-a-brac that goes with it. Right. So while I was trying to defend myself last week, I was thinking of this article that I've since found. 
Uh, I don't remember which, but I always forget which button. Ah, I hit the right button. Uh, this is from LifeWire, which I read a while ago, I think, when I did the 3DS hack. Um, so, uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, here's the part in the article. It says, the short answer is that the Nintendo 3DS's hardware isn't engineered to play Game Boy Advance games. As a result, the few GBA games available to ambassadors aren't emulated, they're simulated. Which is the worst definition yeah, that I've heard. It's the same thing. That's the same thing. Simulation, emulation is simulation. Yeah. You're simulating the hardware. Mm-hmm. Uh, this goes on to say the Nintendo DS has two CPUs, one for processing 3D graphics and one for processing 2D graphics. Um, so that's where the misconception comes from is that the, the, well, no, this is right. The DS does have two processors and so does the 3DS, I Mm -hmm. believe. Um, where the issue comes from, let me get my notes in order. Uh, the 3DS has two processors and they're both ARM. There's an ARM 11 and an ARM 9. Correct. Uh, and I believe they're. They're saying DS, but I think they mean 3DS. They well, had they the ARM9 is the primary DS processor. The ARM9, yes. Yes. Uh yes, the ARM9 is for the DS. Yeah. The ARM11 is the 3DS. Correct. So the DS also has two processors. Yeah. One of them being an an ARM9. Yes, it's a type of ARM9. The Correct. other one is an ARM7. Uh, which is the CPU found in the Game Boy Advance. Yes. So the DS has an ARM7 TDMI, which is the C- the CPU found in a Game Boy Advance. And it also has an ARM9 46E. The 3DS has the ARM9 and an ARM11, so it does not have the hardware that a Game Boy Advance has. Yeah. Therefore... The games that are on the virtual console for 3DS are emulated. And that's why there's a lot of jank stuff going around Game Boy Advance emulation on the 3DS. Right. So for the love of God, (laughs) stop spreading this nonsense. I don't know why that stuff happens. And even in the comment that was left last week, it says... uh, uh, I lost it now. It says uh, it uses, uh, in order to get the Game Boy Advance games to run on virtual console, it uses open AGB firm, which is firmware, mm-hmm. which is not hardware. Right. It's getting the the lower powered CPU to run, to emulate Game Boy Advance. Yeah. It's not a Game Boy, it's not Game Boy Advance hardware. For the love of Jesus Christ and all that's holy, it does not have Game Boy Advance hardware. <laughs> holy shit. Okay. What else happened? Um, it's Garrick. Uh, oh, converted from a Prime Gaming sub. Thank you very much. Uh, just David Barber, thanks for the 20 months. Bob, stop. You're turning us all on. <laughs> <laughs> and Lua Bick, thanks for the 19 months. Pray for me, bros. After dinner tonight, I'm sitting down to upgrade my Steam Deck's storage. The only device I've ever opened up is a Joy-Con, and in doing so, I damaged one of the ribbon cables. <laughs> This should be a little easier. Yeah. I have never done it myself, but it can't be as hard as opening a Joy-Con. You have Joy-Cons a lot are pretty more hard. room to work with in there, yeah. you know? So. And it was kind of built to be open, so. Wolfden Dad says, you lost me at Wii, which is what I had to do now. Have a good podcast. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I'm out of here. Go, go, goodbye, Dad. Have a good, have a good Wii. Anyway. Uh, the DSi didn't have Game Boy hardware either. Uh, it didn't have the slot. Right. I don't know about the processors. I think it still had. You're probably right. I just don't. I think it would still have to have the processors because it used the Game Boy processor for DS applications as well. Yeah, I think it used it used it as a 2D processor. Yeah, I think. So I I don't. It didn't have the slot, but I don't know if it was missing the whole processor. Uh technical specs uh yeah arm nine and arm seven yeah so it was there anyway one more thing before we get into zelda stuff um fifa is free (laughs) for one more day (laughs) oh okay they announced this like uh after our podcast last week and so like it was in the window like we just missed it 
Um, so FIFA 23 Legacy Edition, which basically means it's a FIFA 20 with like the number increased every year. Yes. <laughs> um, has been free all weekend and it'll still be free until tomorrow uh, at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Um, but, but uh, you can purchase the full version of FIFA 23 uh, for 50% off until April 3rd. Oh, that's nice. So that's nice. Um, on a similar note, you can probably find FIFA 20 for much cheaper because you always make the joke that sports games are the same game with the roster update. Um, this is that joke in reality because <laughs> the FIFA games have just been the same damn game every year just with the roster. And update. for some reason, people buy them and like them. Yeah. So I, I, the only reason why I want to put that at the top is because we always like to talk about free games that yes. come with your subscriptions. But also, uh, there's like an insane amount of people that actually like FIFA, even though they get burned by it every year. Well, I know there are people who like regular FIFA, like the one that are on, the ones that are on Xbox and PlayStation and PC, mm -hmm. like people who like those games. But like it, it's like EA has said like over and over again, like FIFA on the Wii. It's just a roster update. Yeah, they don't. Even, yeah. They don't even change the UI graphics. Yeah, they don't. They're 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 not. Uh, it's the barest minimum. They're very open about it. Yeah, they're very open about how how they just don't do yeah. any work they, like, to the game you know, at all. Regular FIFA or Madden or literally everything else, they they go out of their way to highlight all the new features. There's FIFA on Switch is like nah, same fucking game. I like how they call it the Legacy Edition. Yeah, that's, they're not hiding it. At yeah. All. Okay, let's talk about Tears of the Kingdom. Woo, Yay! Zelda! I watched this today. Uh, pretty much confirms a lot of speculation. Yes, uh, I watched it literally right before we we pressed live. Because <laughs> yeah. I have kids. A, a big focus on making stuff. Yes. Crafting stuff. Um, but, so let's just dive into it. Nintendo debuted a few trailers for Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in the lead up to its May 12th release, but it's kept a lot of the game's actual gameplay under wraps. But that's now changed as Nintendo had dropped a 10-minute video featuring an in-depth look into Tears of the Kingdom's gameplay. Zelda producer Eiji Awanuma walked us through the 10 minutes of action detailing everything from Link's updated abilities to new monster types. Awanuma, playing as Link, used the demonstration to focus heavily on Link's new abilities like weapon fusing and movement. Uh, you, you can do just about anything in Tears of the Kingdom, judging from the trailer. Uh, there's so much to break down. The cool thing about these abilities is that they're applicable in so many different uh, situations, traversal, fighting, and crafting. Uh, of course, Nintendo kept uh, the showcase pretty short. Uh, for now, here are all the new details that have been spotted in today's Tears of the Kingdom trailer. Recall is the first uh, new ability. Uh, it can rewind object movement. You can highlight an object, then click a button to rewind its movement. In the gameplay demonstration, Aonuma uses a rock that's fallen from the Sky Island to travel upward into the sky. That's the one way the ability was used in the gameplay trailer, but there must be many more ways to use this, maybe even in combat. Yeah, so here I'm showing on screen right now them recalling a rock that fell from yeah, the sky. It's literally rewind for it looks, a particular object. Yeah, it looks like an elevator. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's cool. That is cool. Um, next up is weapon fusing. Weapon fusing is one of the more exciting abilities that we'll be, uh, get to play around with. Aonuma used the ability to first fuse a stick to a rock to make a hammer-like weapon before turning a long stick and a pitchfork into a long-range spear. Uh, but things get more interesting when Aonuma demonstrates how items work when fused to weapons. When using Link's bow, you can attach items to arrows uh, like Key's eyes and Choo Choo Jelly. Uh, white choo choo jelly. I, I thought it said Cthulhu for a minute. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait a minute. White choo choo jelly combined with an arrow will freeze an enemy while fusing an arrow to a key's eyeball creates a homing arrow that locks onto an enemy to make aiming easier. Now that doesn't make any sense. It's an eyeball. Yeah. So it sees what you're aim, what you're want to aim at. Okay. How does it move? Magic. Okay. Is, is, okay. There's a lot of magic in Zelda. Okay. Have you ever played a Zelda game, Bob? There's a lot of magic. <laughs> Not in it. enough. Uh, also, Link is insanely strong for yeah. being able to put this boulder at the end of a rock and then just wield it like a sword. It's from all the climbing he does in these games. That's true. He is very strong. On the defensive side, Aonuma showed off a puff shroom fused to a shield to envelop an enemy in a smoke when struck. Uh, I was watching this and I said to myself, wow. Dead Rising did this 
<laughs> how many years ago? That's a good point. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they'll, they'll find a much more like clever and interesting ways to mm-hmm. use it. Whereas Dead, Dead Rising was literally just take stick a chainsaw on a baseball bat and hack the zombies. Yeah, that was already. cool. It was cool. Uh, Double Stuffed says, what do you think the meat arrow will do? <laughs> that's like the big... Uh, that, that's the big meme out of this. Like everyone like fusing meat to to an arrow. I mean, he almost Al does Numa it. Almost does he almost it. He, does almost, it. <laughs> he skips right over it. That's got to be for like hunting or. Well, but uh, well, maybe to or, attract, maybe to attract yeah, enemies. Yeah, yeah. That could uh, make sense. What else is there? Also, these enemies are called constructs. Yeah, you're, you're literally fighting the establishment. Basically, yeah, yeah uh next is ultra hand essentially uh crafting non-combat version of weapon fusion uh link can make things anything using items from around hyrule do you remember those cars and planes from earlier trailers and take uh tears of the kingdom those don't necessarily exist in the world they're fused they're fused vehicles created using ultra hand alan Numa demonstrated the ability by fusing logs together to make a raft he found two fans and added them as a propulsion element but another demonstration showed a sail attached to the raft. This is one of the areas where players' creativity will be so important. It looks like these fused together vehicles can get really complex. That's great. It looks like uh, that. This is one of my concerns. I was concerned whether or not it would be like um, a blueprint, like you just yeah. like you you just get a blueprint and it's like okay, this is how you put together a yeah. raft, and like that's all you get. But this looks really. Uh, like freeform like freeform you, you, you can, can do it whatever like you, you want have, you can do literally however you want you yeah. can make this boat in whatever shape you want yeah. i'm sure there will be like blueprints around mm-hmm. like to guide you on how to make it but then other than that because the last game was like that too it was very freeform with like how you well do I, things. I i mean the recipes and stuff i mean like far cry where it's like you need these items oh, and then yeah. you hit a button and then it and spits done. out the yeah. item yeah this you literally are putting it together yeah uh the concern that i have is i saw this on reddit somebody brought this up in a comment um when you start to make like big complex uh uh uh, vehicles and stuff uh how can you save them yeah can you save them is there a place you can store them can you call them at will like uh you like this guy makes this raft he might lose it after this yeah it might be just gone it might despawn like then that would be pretty sad if you make a big complicated thing yeah yeah, I mean, unless it saves the recipe, like the blue, it, it saves like what you use to make it before, so you can make it again pretty quickly. Or, um, it just stays in the world where it is. Yeah, because <laughs> that that this game, uh, I think has been pretty good with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, here it is, a boat with two propellers. That it seems like you can probably make all all sorts of wacky stuff. The yeah. physics yeah. in this. Oh, there it is. There's the uh, big car. This game has all has like a very robust physics engine, yeah. so this makes a lot of sense. And I think people are gonna do a lot of wacky, crazy shit. And I hope that it's easy to share the crazy shit that you do, so other people can do it. Yeah, uh, Ultra Hand is a reference to an old Nintendo toy, the blue extending hand grabber thing. I did that, not know uh, that. Gunpei Yokoi invented. I saw a tweet about that, but yes. I, I didn't know that myself. Um. The next ability is Ascend. Link's new ability lets him ascend through a ceiling to get to the floor above. He can't move through walls, but he can get through ceilings. If you're stuck in a cave, you can use the ability to get to the surface of the hill above. Aonuma also described using Ascend to break out of cages. This looks like it could have been something that would like glitch out. Yeah. And like this will break stuff. Yeah, for sure. Get you in clip clipping hell. Or this will just straight up not work when you want it to. Yeah. Or they've somehow figured out how to make this just work. Mm-hmm. That's why the game's, you know, $10 more. It's because just because of this. <laughs> yeah, this seems like, like, I can't imagine this. I can't this imagine this. Like, this is like. This is a speedrunner's dream right yeah. now. Like, games specifically don't put, like, walk through wall abilities because, like, that breaks the game. Yeah. But here in Nintendo, like, nah, go ahead, bro. Yeah, this seems seems like an issue. Yeah. Uh I found the tweet that uh referenced uh, Ultra Hand. Yeah. Uh Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Cool's new feature is named as a tribute to Nintendo's pre gaming past. And there yes. it is. Uh it's just an extendo. It's an extendo, extendo hand. hand. Yeah. Uh it doesn't actually show it at all. 
I believe you, it's uh, in Super Smash Brothers too. Oh, yeah. that would make sense. Uh, new enemies. Constructs are a new enemy type shown in Tuesday's trailer. They appear pretty basic when first introduced, but later on in the trailer, Anuma revealed that these enemies, like other enemies, um, can also use fused weapons. The construct in the trailer had a fuse, uh, what looked like a stick and a plant, uh, creating a fan that swept Link away from battle. It that seems just, really annoying. It didn't just sweep him away from battle. It swept him off the platform and plunging to the ground. Yeah, because he was really high up in the sky. So yeah. now he has to... And he only got up there because a rock fell and he used yeah. it. So, like, you can't get back up there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, sure there's a bunch of ways to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm but... sure later in the game you can access, like, a plane or something. Yeah, yeah, you can craft one if, yeah. if you wanted to. But then you got to get all the way up there. He was really far away. Yeah. Uh, weapon degradation. Yay. It's back. Link's stick from the air islands uh, broke pretty quickly in the demonstration before he fused it to a rock. The stick seemed to break quicker than normal, but we weren't shown enough to get a real feeling uh, for the intricacies just yet. It may just be that fusing weapons uh, are more durable. Uh, that sucks. Weapon degradation in video games sucks. <laughs> I'm glad that there's fusing because that means you can just make an just an impossible amount yeah. of, of, of I mean, weapons. I'm not surprised it's back because this, this literally is Breath of the Wild 2. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure like most of the, you know, systems and stuff would have carried over, including weapon degradation because it was a big part of the last game. I mean, he was using a stick. Yeah. I, I think it's fine if a stick breaks. Right. But once you start getting like swords and stuff. A sword should not break. No. Well, it shouldn't break easily. Hopefully, there's. Uh, I've I keep saying there should be some sort of like enchantment or something you yeah. can do that uh, keeps it together. Yeah. Uh, is that it? Uh, one more thing. Uh, coordinates. If you look closely to the mini map, you'll see that those are coordinates listed on the map. Uh, true improvement in navigation of Hyrule. I didn't even see the mini map. Me neither. Oh, it's in the bottom right. Oh. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, looks like DLC. <laughs> looks like, I mean, it's got a lot. The, it's it's the way that you play around with physics, but but really, it's it's the same high rule too. Well, he said in the trailer that things are different. Like, I guess like the landscape had to have changed somewhat. It better be different. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole sky. Now. Yeah. Uh, see, my, one of my concerns also was that the sky section was just gonna be like a divine beast and it was just gonna be like one sky section but yeah. it looks like they're all over hyrule yeah. is, is is sky stuff so that's cool i think that uh adding the crafting and and the crafting <laughs> the vehicle crafting and the and the crafting of weapons and stuff is gonna add a lot to the game yeah oh certainly um... uh, enough for a sequel i guess and enough again, for a sequel that's ten dollars more than the original we only saw about 10 minutes of it so True. There could be a lot more going on. Yeah. Like, you know, Link's got that magic hand now that can, like, do... A, I mean, I'm sure that's what Ultra Hand is and all those other abilities. But it could, it might do a lot more. Maybe it turns into an arm cannon, like Samus. Uh, yeah. That, that We didn't see all of Link's abilities. Yes. Link definitely has more than this. Uh, and I think uh, we saw that in the trailer and some screenshots. Like, there's, like, supposed to be a meter of his, like, ability. Yeah. I mean, it's also possible they took that out, uh, but yeah, I, I don't think this is it. I think there that there will be more to yeah. it. Uh, I never beat Breath of the Wild. I got Me two divine beasts, and then I stopped. I didn't get any divine beasts. Oh, I my plan was to go and like try to find all the outfit parts, to, like help you climb and stuff, mm -hmm. and then I just like moved on to another game, and I'm not upset. That I never finished it. Like, I feel I like I'm at peace with it. Because I don't think, even if I did go after the Divine Beast, like, I don't think I would have ever finished that game. Yeah. Because it's just too big. I'm considering picking it. Uh, I'm definitely going to pick it back up again. I definitely want to yeah. finish it before this comes out. I'm considering just running for Ganon. Oh, yeah? I have two Divine Beasts. Uh -huh. I want to get, like, a nice big sword. Yeah. And just run at them. Because, yeah. like, I was watching a speedrunner do it with nothing, with no Divine Beasts. Yeah. And I was like, well, I got two of them. <laughs> So, certainly, I have yeah. a leg up, right? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to uh, figure out how to get the Master Sword and the Ma and the Hylian Shield, like, quickly. Yeah, the, 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 the sword you need 
a lot of hearts. Yeah. And I don't. Th- I think I'm just shy of, of a few. Uh, the shield, you need a good shield because you need a parry. Yeah. Uh, Willow Davis says, I did Ganon with only two divine beasts by accident. It was fine. And hey, man. There you go. If you think it's fine, I might just run at him. You can get the Master Sword via a glitch. Nah. Nah. I don't, I'm not above glitching. So Wood's been playing uh, Breath of... He's playing it right now. Yeah. Uh, Breath of the Wild with um, crowd control, which is a thing where the chat uh, can change things in the game so they right. can kill you on the spot if yeah. they want to they could uh lightning strike you they can give you weapons they could take away weapons so theoretically if the chat was nice he could walk up to the master sword pull it and keep getting healed by the chat right uh but the chat usually doesn't want to play nice no and they no, would probably cause... make the hearts yeah. go away quicker um you can sneak in the basement and grab the shield the shield is in the castle. Oh, it's under Ganon? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll just do that. Do yeah. you even need it, though? Because you really just need it for parrying, and you just need you can just do that with any shield, right? Yeah. But I'm sure, like, Ganon is, like, strong enough where he'll, like, break most shields pretty easily. Mm-hmm. I was watching Point Crow do the speedrunning. Uh, not that I think I can fucking speedrun Zelda. Yeah. But uh, he was using this big-ass sword. Yeah. And he does this, like, spin move that, that hits a bunch of times and hits really hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, gotta do that. Gotta get me one of them big swords. Um, to fully charge the magic sword, you have to complete a challenge. Yeah, I want to do as little as possible. I think I just want to run at him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How much more time are you going to plan your playthrough than actually spend time playing? All right, fuck you, Willow <laughs> Davis. <laughs> uh, that's not all they revealed today about no. Zelda. They also revealed this that we knew about yes, already. Yes, it leaked, but now here we have it officially in high res. Nintendo finally unveiled its long-rumored Tears of the Kingdom Collector's Edition OLED Switch. Not a Switch Pro, but it's an OLED Switch. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom Switch comes with gold Joy-Con that have subtle patterns painted on them in green and white, and a white dock with a golden Triforce design in the middle. The best part is that there's no logo, just the pure aesthetics. Uh, the console itself uh, comes separate from the game and will release a few weeks ahead of it on April 28th. So they usually do that. They yeah. usually give the release the console before it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm disapp- I mean, I think this looks great. I think this is the best looking Switch that they've made. Yeah. The only issue I have is that the console is black. They got to fucking make them yeah. different colors it's that's i'm surprised they keep doing that the joy cons are gold and white and yeah. and they look great they look awesome and and the dock looks awesome but the freaking console itself the tablet itself yeah. is just black the, the back has the the swirls the but spot like, gloss the, it's swirls like, you know it's it, those those swirls are also black yeah it's so. it's it's dumb it, it makes it much less special yeah um so we saw this leaked way before we we yeah. saw uh, uh, pictures of this and it looked legit. Mm-hmm. So we were like, eh, it's probably it was a rumor, but we were like, it's probably real. Yeah. Last week while I was at PAX, Wood showed me a picture of it on his phone. I was like, here, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because doesn't he have it already? He got it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't I, you know, you know he, I better not ask questions. He told me how he got it. And I still don't understand. <laughs> he doesn't either. It kind of just, just ended okay. up in his lap. Okay. He released a video on it today. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning of the video, he's about to explain where he got it. And then another him comes out and interrupts him and says, I'm just not going to say where I got it. Yeah. That's because of me. That's because <laughs> I yelled at him yesterday. And I said, just don't fucking tell yeah. anybody anything. Because people are going to get mad. They don't deserve to know anyway. Yeah. You don't have to explain anything. Well, some things are best kept secret. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even... Honestly, though, if you held a gun to my head, I would not... And I he told me how he got it. If yeah. you held a gun to my head and was like, how did we get it? I'd be like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> he told me and I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I legitimately have no idea right. how, how that ended up happening. Um, But... He waited until the system was officially revealed in order to release his video because uh, he might have gotten in big trouble because right. uh, 
he still could. He still could have yeah. the Nintendo ninjas show up at his house because yeah. that has happened before. Being like, where did you get this yeah. thing from? So that's still a real possibility. But I, I think the chances are less now that it um, is officially announced. Also, I think his video has more views than the actual commercial for it <laughs> that on on the Nintendo channel. Nice. Yeah. Um, not only that, Nintendo unveiled the. Tears of the Kingdom Pro Controller and Carrying Case. And those will be out, I believe, the same day as the game. So, also interest. Oh, that is actually a really nice Pro Controller. I know, right? It has a, one white grip. Yeah. That's crazy. Do we? There is no Pro Controller with a white grip, right? I don't huh. think so. This is No, the Smash Brothers one, right? Uh, with a grip's white? Yeah. I don't think so. There was a white gripped Dragon Quest? Dragon Quest or was it Xenoblade? Uh one of the Xenoblades. Everyone's saying Smash. It is Smash. There it you was go. Smash. Okay, it's less cool than I thought now <laughs> that the Smash one has white grips. Uh and also has a carrying case. Now I will say that this OLED switch is ten dollars more than a regular OLED switch. Yeah. And it does not come with anything else. It's literally ten dollars more yeah, it because it's got pretty graphics yeah. on it, which is unfortunate. Some systems, like the Mario Edition Switch that was red, yes, was ten dollars more. That came with a carrying case. Pretty sure the Tears of the Kingdom one does not come with a carrying case. No, the carrying case, yeah, uh, you have to buy separately. That is so dumb and stupid. Also, it doesn't come with a game. I know yeah. a lot of people think that it does. It does not. No. Um. Oh, another thing about the Pro Controller being released. Uh, now you can buy Pro Controllers again. Pro Controllers <laughs> have been out of stock everywhere yeah. until about a week ago. Yeah. And now that this is out, they're back. You can buy them again. Right. And I also saw uh, they're selling fake ones on Amazon. They, yeah. If, if you see them for under $60, it's a fake Probably Pro fake. Controller. Yeah. Uh, make sure you see a Nintendo logo somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, I think this Switch looks really cool. I think it's the best looking Switch that they made. I just wish that they'd freaking make the actual Switch a different color. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's it. Look forward to seeing that. Maybe I'll make a YouTube short on it if I can get my hands on it. I know Jackson's getting it. I know Wood already has it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that. Thank you, Eric, for the 60 months. How you doing? Uh, right as I haven't used my Switch in months, someone has a Steam Deck. <laughs> it's been a while since I've used my Switch too, but I've been playing other games on other systems. Mm. I did get the Resident Evil 4 remake. I haven't played it yet. I'm going to play it this weekend. So yeah, I, I wanted to play it. I haven't had a chance. I'm going to have time to play it this weekend. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll get it on PC. There you go. Does it run good on Steam Deck? That's a question for Steam Deck users. I mean, you know what? It I runs. Look... I know it runs well on PlayStation Four. Okay, that's pretty good. So, Proton DB, uh, Resident Evil Four. I do think I'm gonna bust out my PS4, the the DualShock back paddle attachment to it, because I remember when I played the demo, like running, like. They mapped running to like a shoulder button and clicking the thumbstick, but I think I'm just gonna put it on the back panel oh. so I can like have my other fingers freed up. Steam Deck has two yes. extra buttons, uh, four extra buttons. Um, Tinker Steps switch to experimental graphics, minor artifacts. Whenever bright fire, lava, or explosions show up, the brightness bits are glitchy blue. Uh, right. Works flawlessly with th these are just people commenting. Yeah. Proton database. I I, I feel like they could. <laughs> do a little bit to right. unify this uh works flawlessly with balanced options out of the box even without fsr2 whatever that is for the majority of the time with 30 to 40 fps i capped it at 30 just a few times when things got really busy fps got below 30 but then fsr2 holded it like a champ okay so it looks like it runs pretty good yeah uh here's some people writing in chinese and they seem to not like it the Chinese think it runs bad. Okay. Uh, switch to experimental. First cutscene, I noticed the vehicle disappear for a moment and stretched limbs briefly. 
<laughs> uh, game freezes randomly during cutscene. First cutscene took three attempts. Okay. Look, uh, right. It looks like for the most part it works just fine. Yeah, you just lower your graphical settings. Yeah. Fine. AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Oh, uh, see, here's the thing. If I'm playing a game on Steam Deck, I just want it to run. Yeah. That, I don't need all of these. That's specials. why I like playing on console. Because you <laughs> theoretically just put the game in and it works. Uh, no, dude, look at the Steam reviews. It's god awful. That's another reason why I don't like Proton Database. Because <laughs> they just fucking rate things great when they're yeah. not. Yeah. Um, nor I have yet to run into an issue on Steam Deck. Every okay. single game that I have wanted to play on Steam Deck has run just fine. With the exception of when it first came out, Apex Legends was a little wonky. Okay. Uh, and then like a week later, it updated and it was totally fun. So I've never had a problem. So There have been games that I've wanted to play that just straight up won't work at all. Right. Like you can't even download it. Yeah. Um. But... Yeah, I've been. I mean, it's been great. I played friggin' Sonic Forces the other day again. Frontiers. Frontiers. <laughs> I know. I know. It's really bad that they named the next mainline Sonic game, the one that was supposed to revolutionize Sonic games, similar to the one that yeah. like, kind of upset everybody. The worst one. Yeah. People are saying The Last of Us on Steam is running bad. I don't know. I've if heard that's that a news topic, that The Last of Us on Steam is running bad. Yeah, I looked into it. I don't know how much news we can say about that. It's I don't. Just, it's literally just the game runs bad on Steam. Which yeah. is not unheard. Like, that happens pretty frequently. Yeah, and I Like, think, a little too frequently. And I feel like, you know, these games get patched so quickly now. Like, that's not going to be an issue down the road. Mm -hmm. You know? So, I don't really think it's... I don't really think it's newsworthy. Yeah. Console games sometimes break when they port them to PC. Or games that are developed specifically for consoles, even if they release day and date with PC and console, yeah, sometimes they just are fucked. And yeah, unfortunately, this is the reality of playing games on PC. Yeah. You have to wait for it to launch and look at some reviews. Uh, there's freezing; it crashes to desktop. Poor performance with um, strain on the CPU. Mouse stutter. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look great. Lord but... Lord DC says PlayStation did it on purpose. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Remember that when they accused Microsoft of doing that? Well, don't you worry, because we got Microsoft Activision PlayStation. Oh, you thought we were up. done. Oh, you thought we were done <laughs> with that? It's getting wild, baby. Chris Mack, were you talking about Last of Us, or were you talking about freaking uh, uh, Resident Evil? We were talking no, about we're Resident Evil. We were talking about Resident Evil. Someone brought up uh, The Last of Us is running. Right. But he's, he said it runs god awful. Yeah. We, uh, I hope you were talking about The Last of Us. Bob, do you prefer PC game or console handheld? I prefer console, but lately it's been PC because of the Steam Deck. Right. Because it just it makes my life a lot easier. Oh, he was talking about The Last of Us. Good. So I'm going to get Resident Evil 4 on PC. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I want to talk about the 3DS eShop. It died last night. R.I.P. Yes. Pour one out for your whole boy. Uh, this is a tweet that I did right when it died. This was, uh, 8.08. So it died at 8 o'clock. Okay. Last night, yeah. Eastern time. So you boot it up, you get an error code. The error code changed. Uh, but it says information has been updated and Nintendo eShop will restart. Right. Uh, and then it shuts down. I got a different error again last night when I opened it, and it just said, it didn't say it would restart. It said, like, you can't do right. anything. Like, you're you're screwed. But you can close it and open it back up again, and then you actually do get into the eShop, uh, but there used to be a bunch of different, yeah. like, like, categories here, and now there is just one that says Nintendo Selects. There used to also be games on the bottom. Now they're not there anymore. And then you click on Nintendo Selects. It shows you Mario Maker, and it says this software is currently unavailable. Right. And the other ones are going to say the same thing. Yeah. So rip Nintendo 3DS eShop. You will be missed. You can still download your old software for yes. the foreseeable future. What you have to do is go to the menu and go to like read downloadable software. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see a bunch of stuff that you have downloaded already that is not currently on your 3DS. <sighs> okay badge arcade i don't know what this is but 
it broke. Okay. Uh, Nintendo Badge Arcade 3DS service ends daily free plays. Uh, we've got some news for you. Yeah, 3DS, blah, blah, blah. With the 3DS shutdown currently taking place around the globe, it's now been confirmed. Nintendo Japanese website that has that this title has been partially shut down. As highlighted by well-known Nintendo data miner and Twitter user Oatmeal Dome, it means daily free plays will no longer be given out and badge catchers won't be rotated. I don't know what that means. Nintendo has now officially confirmed that badge arcade uh, service was partially shut down on March 24th. Daily free plays will no longer work. Uh, Okay. Badge arcade, no more. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh... Anyone playing Badge Arcade? <laughs> yeah, anyone know what the hell it is? Uh, in the meantime, we also have uh, a, a, a big scare happened. Oh, uh, Pokemon Transporter went down when, oh, when the eShop yes, went yes. down. So this is by Central Leaks. It said, so uh, Nintendo just shut down Poke Transporter. Now there's no way to import Pokemon from games prior to 3DS era. This was a big concern remember yeah, we had like yeah, an argument about, about it this, yeah uh because pokemon bank is a free game that you can download from the eShop, right which now you cannot download mm-hmm. because the whole eShop shut down i thought yes. maybe free games would still be there no nope. there's literally nothing yep. on the eShop. um so that sucks um pokemon tr- poke transporter is a uh paid subscription that uh, is it like an in-game purchase in Pokemon Bank? Yeah. So you open Pokemon Bank now if you have downloaded it already, and it says you can't use Pokemon Transporter. Your pass has expired. Yeah. Uh, this was a glitch, so it didn't actually happen. Uh, Sarah B reports the bug that appeared to affect Poke Transporter from working. If you didn't have an active subscription before the eShop went down, now appears to be resolved, and the software can be used. Not only that. I think I heard that it's free now. Uh, if you have a copy of Pokemon Bank on your 3DS, you can now use it for free. Uh, the app will say that there is a free trial period in progress with a glitch countdown currently at question mark 40 days remaining. Okay. So uh, that kind of sucks for people who had a subscription, like who, yeah. uh, who paid for like last month, you know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that is actually good news. Yeah, that is actually good news that this will continue to work because I was thinking last night we were talking about it on stream and I was like, this ruins like this just this just keeps Pokemon like this is a stopgap. Like, yeah. like you can't get Pokemon from previous games onto the switch at mm-hmm. all. They're 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 locked out. Yeah. It would be impossible if this didn't exist. But it's still around and it's free now. So that is good. Uh, alternatively, there are ways that you can, uh, uh, there's an app called PK hex, which, uh, will, uh, sh- it's a save file editor. So you can pull Pokemon from one of your save files. Uh-huh. Uh, and my chat was saying, it's not the same. Those aren't your Pokemon. Cause it's kind of copying all of the data from right. the Pokemon. And then you're getting into like, uh, uh, the boat of Theseus, yeah, ship of Theseus, the ship yeah. of Theseus, the boat, yeah. <laughs> the ship of Theseus uh, conundrum, yeah. like, uh, like it's it's fu- the fucking Pokemon doesn't yeah. have a conscious, yeah, it's just a it's 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 just data but, anyway. But neither did Vision, and that's why Vision asked White Vision if it's the same Vision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's from Wanda, you didn't watch. Wanda I didn't watch Wanda no. Vision, but I, I I get it, I get it. So, uh, that that wouldn't. That PK Hex program wouldn't be able to get your Pokemon onto the Switch unless uh, you were using a hacked Switch of some sort yeah. or something. So uh, we still need Pokemon Bank. So this is good. Yeah. This is very good. Uh, also good, it looks like Nintendo has re-enabled the ability to redeem download codes on the Wii U and 3DS eShops. You now have until April 4th at 4.30 a.m. Um, to redeem leftover codes. Oh, Lord DC says, by the way, Pokemon Bank now says question mark 39. Oh, so it's counting down to something. <laughs> yeah, so maybe <laughs> it, it might break again. Yeah. That seems like a glitch they'll probably fix or something. Yeah. Um, the question mark is an overflow error. Indicating over 1,000. Oh, okay. So it could be 
it could just go on infinitely. Yeah. Um, anyway, the reason why this is news right here uh, that they that you can use download codes again yeah. is because download codes stopped working when the eShop went down. Right. So that led people to think that download codes were also going to stop working. Yeah. But no, it looks like they will be fine until April 4th, which is next week. <laughs> yeah, which is very soon. And that really sucks. Yeah. That's very stupid. Uh, if you can... If you can re-download software you already have, why can't you use download codes? Because they're probably like pulling the interface that you input the code into. That is very stupid. I know. Wow. That would be a very dumb to do. You know what's stupid? Cutting off an entire ecosystem. <laughs> yes. You'd be right. Uh, and the last thing that happened that I oh, I'm aware of, if anybody else knows anything else, let me know in the chat. But uh, they released two themes for free on the theme shop which i didn't even know existed <sighs> uh and they are horrible they're they're <laughs> ugly as all sin yeah they're not great uh there is like a polka dot one and a star one yeah. i don't know i don't know what that's about but they're free i think they were paid at one point like you had to pay for them uh, oh not free in the eu maybe us only okay but yeah, that's that's it. Uh, all, there were other themes there, and they're all yeah. gone, and now they're just these two free ones. Uh, Europe got different new themes. I oh. hope that they're better than better this. Better than this, because these are stupid. Just got custom ones using Anemone. The custom ones are great. Yeah, the hacked 3DS has a lot of great stuff like that. Um, so that's it for a 3DS rip 3DS. You will be missed. No. Uh, big win for us though. It is now, uh, morally acceptable yes. to, uh, pirate. Yes. If anything, <laughs> you have a duty to pirate 3DS and Wii U software. Yes. Because otherwise you can't get it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been playing, uh, on Twitch, um, the new Super Mario Brothers two dlc okay new super mario bros 2 the 3ds game yes is um it has dlc that costs like two dollars and fifty cents each mm -hmm. um it has extra levels but that you have to you're forced to play them in like a coin rush mode so right. you're forced to like kind of speed run them which is kind of cool the last ones are the hardest mario levels i have ever played okay they're super i have yet to beat any of them okay any of the three that right, came right. in the pack um and i played them for like six hours yeah um you currently cannot acquire them like you're yeah. you're if you didn't get the dlc already you can't get them the only way to acquire them is to buy a new Super Mario Bros. 2 edition 3DS that comes with new Super Mario Bros. 2 gold installed already. Pre-installed, yeah. yeah. So you need a whole ass special edition 3DS right. in order to get that. Or you get the ROM. And that's what I did. Or or somebody makes it in Mario Maker and uploads it to the, to the Mario I, Maker. I think that server. does exist. I think uh, sure Willow Davis was saying that. Oh, no, no. It was a ROM hack in uh, 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 Super Mario World, I think. Well, but I, they probably have it in Because I know somebody did the Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Brothers 3 e-reader card levels mm -hmm. in Mario Maker. That makes sense. So. However, it's going to be different because you can't spin jump in the uh new super mario bros 2 on the 3ds right. there's no spin jump that would make it so much easier <laughs> if you could spin jump because there's like spinies and yeah. you can spin jump on top of the spinies also it gives you an extra little boost in the air the game's fucking hard yeah. it's so hard anyway speaking uh, of emulation oh yeah uh steam is getting dolphin uh i don't know that this is as big a news as everybody's making it out to be uh well let's read and find out okay. the makers of dolphin announced that the gamecube and wii emulator will be coming to steam early access later this year it promises to let users play classics like the legend of zelda the wind waker and um super mario galaxy with improved graphics and better performance than the original consoles offered uh sure nintendo's lawyers are thrilled 
Uh, we're pleased to announce uh, our great experiment. Dolphin is coming to Steam, the creators wrote on Tuesday via Nintendo Life. We're pleased to finally tell the world our experiment. Uh, this is this has been the product of many months of work, and we look forward to getting in. We we'll look forward to getting it into those users' hands soon. While Dolphin's Steam page is already live, the emulator won't officially be available through Steam storefront until sometime in the next few months. The open source emulator, which has been which has been in ongoing development for two decades, uh, will be. Well, f- yeah, I remember downloading it back like in the Wii era to play Metroid on my original MacBook. Oh my god. Um, it will be free to download and will support 4K displays as well as modern controllers. It will also it also has built-in net play for online multiplayer as well as support for community mods, randomizers, and custom level packs. Other perks include playing with save states, slow motion, and rapid fire. The emulator's makers are quick to point out that Dolphin does not actually come with any games, something they note repeatedly on the Steam page. This software is built to run legally acquired games. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, one of the notices says, Dolphin emulator does not come with games. We do not condone piracy in any way, shape, or form. Yes, they do. Wink, wink, nudge, and nudge. And yes, we do here on the, <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the Wolf Den podcast. Right. I almost said the wrong podcast. <laughs> That's right. Pirate Nintendo podcast episodes. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, while players can take their... Uh, while players can take their existing game collections, rip them to PC, and then use those disc images on the emulator, there's also no shortage of ways to download pirated copies of console games, which is one of the reasons Nintendo has historically treated emulation and all amateur development for its lockdown platforms as con- as contempt with contempt. Steam Deck users in particular have had a field day recently with using emulators to access their old game collections on the go. Hell yeah. And often with better performance, Valve has accidentally included an icon for a Switch emulator called Yuzu in one of its uh, trailers for the PC gaming handheld before quickly yes, deleting the did. reference. In lieu of a robust virtual console features on the Switch, emulators like Dolphin are, in a boon to re- are a boon to retro gaming enthusiasts and preservationists alike. Uh, just last week, Nintendo turned down the turned off the Wii U and 3DS eShops, uh, making some games impossible to download uh, at all. Now, Holy Lettuce in the chest says, that is going to be so fun, LOL. I'm sure going to play my GameCube games on my PC. You can do it now. That uh, That's why, so, I don't think this is a big deal because Dolphin exists. We'll download it 20 years ago yeah, on I, I think, I think <laughs> MacBook. The, I think the big deal is that it's being added to a game-specific storefront yeah, rather than just download it from like an enthusiast website. But RetroArch has been on uh the the the, uh, the Steam. It's been on Steam, right? But now Dolphin is gonna. My what I was gonna also add it was that not only is it gonna be added on Steam, but it's also going to be available. That means easily on the Steam Deck. So you're getting yes. GameCube games on another console so that is uh i think the biggest deal is that it's more easily accessible to people with the steam deck yeah i think that most people with the steam deck that wanted to play emulators already did right because it's really not it's an extra it's one extra step you right. gotta open the desktop but now they remove that step yeah so now you can play gamecube yeah. just like that but again retro arc was there and retro arc has dolphin cores there you go. And I got to say, Dolphin is not exactly uh, user-friendly. Like, like it's... Yeah. As far as emulators go, it is pretty user-friendly. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the most user-friendly out of all of the emulators. And I wouldn't say it's particularly user-friendly because emulators are inherently not user-friendly. Yeah. Um, and I've used it a fuck ton. I'm just saying, like, it's not as easy as just putting the game in and hitting play there's always yeah. something and every for whatever reason every single place that i put dolphin whether it be an android device whether it be windows whether it be mac every single place that i use it you're required to map the controls they don't just automatically work and a lot of other emulators just automatically work right. and they work good so um i guess it's good that you'll be able to play it on the steam deck a lot easier but again uh, don't get too excited. You could just fucking do it all right. You could do it now. You could just yeah. go do it now. You could just download Dolphin. Go go to type in Dolphin emulator in your computer and just download it. So uh, there. <laughs> so there. Also, if you're watching this, you probably already know about you know yeah. emulators and whatnot. 
if we could make PS3 emulation better, that would be great. That, that would be great. That would be incredibly hard to do also. I mean, if we could just make Sony have PS3 emulation on the PS5 uh, mm-hmm. without having to get a fucking subscription service to do it, mm-hmm. that would be fantastic. Yes. Uh, the Legitimizer says, Emudeck literally configures the controls for you. Not if you plug in a controller. It does it, it, does it for uh, the Steam Deck. But if you plug yeah. in a controller, you have to, every single controller you plug in, you have to map. Which is not normal for emulation because an Xbox controller is always automatically mapped yeah. on every other emulator that I've used. Uh, anyway, this is kind of a big deal to me. I want to play Counter Strike again. Well, now's your chance to play a whole new ass Counter Strike. Because Valve on Wednesday announced Counter Strike 2, the evolution of one of the most storied first person shooters, according to the game's website, CS2, as a massive update to Counter Strike Global Offensive the crown jewel of the tactical shooter genre for decades. Maps are re- maps were rebuilt from the ground up with new tools and features. The new game will be available on Windows as a free update to CSGO, which is already free to play sometime this summer. CSGO, the fourth main series entry in the Counter-Strike franchise, launched in 2012 by Valve, the makers of the Steam Deck, uh, and long dominated the tactical shooter genre which rewards precision aim and coordinate, coordinated tactics to achieve objectives like planting or defusing bombs. Its dominance was tested in 2020 when Riot Games released Valorant, which featured more contemporary graphics and agents um, with unique abilities like smoke and walls. The announcement of Counter-Strike 2 gives the series a modern upgrade and a chance to attract newer players who weren't interested in a decades-old game. So I've been playing a lot of Valorant, which is why I'm excited about this. Yeah. I played Counter-Strike... Uh, way back in the day. I think Source was my yeah. first one. Well, because when we got Half-Life 2, that didn't come with its own multiplayer. It came with Counter-Strike Source yeah. as its multiplayer. Yeah. And then eventually I moved on to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Yeah. Um, And I was horrible at it. I don't think I ever fully grasped that you shouldn't move and shoot at the same time. Yeah. Uh, then I lately I've been playing Valorant and that's been great. Uh, but I like to try something else. And this takes Valorant and basically scales it back a little bit because you're removing the abilities and stuff. Well, not necessarily because the game announcement boasts a variety of upgrades to the game experience. CS2 features dynamic volumetric smoke that reacts to gunfire. The game has clear, uh, cleaner and brighter visuals including high-resolution updates to the CSGO guns and finishes and updated environmental effects. It also uses sub-tick updates for movement, moving and shooting. That's uh, particularly important for the competitive aspect of the game where players' reflexes are continually tested and the tiniest incre- uh, increments of time make significant difference uh, to the outcome of the game. Uh, once you get in on a limited test, according to Valve's FAQ, the current CSGO players are selected based on a number of factors deemed important by Counter-Strike 2 development team, including but not limited to recent playtime on Valve official servers, trusted uh, trust factor, and Steam account standing. If you're invited into the test, you'll see a notification on CSGO's main menu. Players will be invited over time until the game launches. We'll continue to report as information becomes available. Eric in the chat says, I tried Valorant and it wanted me to change BIOS settings, so I said, fuck that. <laughs> now, that's a problem that... Uh, hopefully valve fixes with counter-strike yes the reason why you need to change bios settings for valorant is, or most of the time is because it has a very strict anti-cheat yeah uh counter-strike does not have a strict anti-cheat and it's very easy to cheat in counter-strike yeah. so much so that there's already a cheater in the beta <laughs> of counter-strike 2 i don't yeah. know how they got in but I saw a video today of a guy cheating in Counter-Strike 2. Um, now, I saw two dedicated videos on uh, Valve's YouTube channel about the new Counter-Strike when they revealed it. One of them was the sub-tick updates. Uh, if you don't know, the way a lot of competitive shooters work, or a lot of games online, is they they ping the server every couple of nanoseconds mm-hmm. like uh uh counter-strike has 128 ticks tick rate the tick rate's 128 that means right 128 times a second i think it pings the server mm-hmm. and sends your information to the server and receives information from the server 128 times a second which is way more than any other game that yeah. i know 
Um, I think Valorant, by comparison, is half that or less than half that. It's a it's a lot less than that. Right. Um. So they developed a thing where it will determine what happens in between those ticks. So you don't have to wait for the server to be pinged. It will just send your inputs. Right. Like, I think what's happening is it's syncing the in-between ticks with the ticks of the other players and uh, going back and retroactively deciding whether, like who shot first. Yeah. Um, it sounds pretty cool. The other really big update is the smokes. Yeah. The uh, smoking is is great. Everybody should do. It. No, yeah. smoking <laughs> is is a really big part of these games because it makes it so you can't see. S- the whole game is about lining up your shots, and if you can't see a whole part of the map, then it fucks you up. And mm-hmm. you have to enter. You know, it's all about entry and defending. Yeah. So if a whole area is smoked off, it might ruin entry. You know, uh, they redid the smokes so that you can shoot through them and see and you can throw a grenade and it'll disrupt the smokes and you can kind of like tactically see through it it looks really cool uh so that changes things a lot um otherwise as a guy who's played valorant a lot recently it just looks like valorant with regular (laughs) guns uh and no abilities except you buy smokes but that might be uh that might be what you what some people need. They don't. It, want I feel like the, it's what I need. Yeah. I'm I mean, look, Counter Strike, CS:GO, like the, this article says, it's been around for like ten years now, mm-hmm. and you know it's still like the standard in like tactical esports and like you know the online community. Yeah. Like it's for a reason because it's it's good, it's great. So now they're officially coming out with a a full on sequel to it. Yeah. You know that like that could get people back into it. That can get people excited for it. It's gonna get me back into it. It's amazing to me that this is the officially the fifth Counter Strike game because there was the original Counter Strike, the mod, yes, okay, which eventually got a standalone release. Then there was Condition Zero, which was a follow up. It was like a it was a full on sequel. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Then there was Source. Which was the remake in Source Engine, and then there was Go. Okay, that makes sense. It's like, and then and now there's this. No, this, this is the fifth. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. But like, to call it Counter Strike Two, <laughs> that is that's true. And like, even though it's like, I don't want to say it's a remake of the first game, but like, it is basically a remake of the first game. Like, the levels are mostly yeah. the same with with modern updates and stuff. They're adding like some new features, but like. Like, they could have called it something else, you know? It's the two implies all new things. So, they have the same maps. Yes. But they're also adding new maps. Okay. And then also they're enabling community-made maps. Okay. So, I think there's three different sections of maps that you can, like, pool. There's three different pools of maps that you can play in. Currently, in, uh, in Valorant, uh-huh. there's a bunch of maps but they remove them out of competitive rotation every season. So like okay. there's only like three or four that you can actually play like per season. Yeah. And it's super annoying because they like, re- you like a map and then they just take it out randomly. Mm-hmm. Um, Counter-Strike is different. They allow you to strike maps. So if you are playing competitively, you can just choose not to play them. You can be like, I hate that map. And they just say, you don't want to play it. And yeah. You just won't ever get into a server with it. <sighs> anyway, uh, hey, it's time to shit all over E3. Oh, Let's our do favorite it. pastime over we here. We love doing it. Uh, Ubisoft's not going. Um, E3 2023 has taken another hit as Ubisoft has confirmed it will not have a presence at the show floor. In a statement to Video Game Chronicle, the publisher revealed that it will instead hold its own live event presentation on June 12th in Los Angeles. The publisher's statement to VGC reads, We initially intended to have an official E3 presence. We've uh, made the subsequent decision to move in a different direction and will be holding the Ubisoft Forward Live event on June 12th in Los Angeles. We look forward to sharing more details with our players very soon. Uh, Ubisoft CEO uh, and perpetual man with his head in the dirt, Yves Guillemot, stated in February that the company would commit to attending if E3 happens. 
If that's the case, this news certainly doesn't bode well for the fate of what's supposed to be E3's big return. Mm -hmm. As for what Ubisoft could uh, show off at the event, Assassin's Creed Mirage, the crew of Motorfest, and maybe Skull and Bones are slated to release this year. Other announcements, uh, other announced projects include the Long Quiet, Splinter Cell, and Prince of Persia remakes, a multitude of new Assassin's Creed games, and Avatar for Tears of Pandora. Oh a God. rumored follow-up to Immortals Phoenix Rising could also make an appearance. Uh, but that's not all, because just before the show went live, Sega and Tencent also pulled I out. I didn't see the, this. Yeah, that, see this, this is what I was adding at the beginning of the key. IGN has learned that Sega and Tencent will be skipping E3 amidst rumors that the proposed, the promised triumphant return of game's biggest event may not happen at all. IGN, IGN reporters have spoken with numerous individuals in publishing NPR who typically have knowledge of the event strategies, all of whom expressed concern about the status of this summer's event. Many told us that they hadn't heard anyone, they hadn't heard of anyone else who was planning on attending for sure. And some said that they felt that there has been a significant lack of communication from the ESA and organizer Reed Pop as to what exactly they should expect from the show. Several described the situation as one where everyone was waiting for someone else to be the first to jump, but no one was, uh, no one was willing to take the leap and time is running out as acknowledged uh, as one knowledgeable source put it ahead of the Monday's news of Ubisoft's departure of the show. There's no possible way this show can happen. So, yeah, uh, I was going to say, I didn't know that Sega was pu was pulling out. I didn't even know they were pulled in. I yeah. didn't even know they were a part of it at all. But uh, I heard somewhere that IGN got reported that the uh, they were rumored. They found a rumor that they, they it might not happen at all. Yeah. That E3 might not happen mm -hmm. at all, which makes a lot of sense now that all of these people yeah. are pulling out. Imagine booking this. Imagine like being a freaking journalist and being like, "Oh yeah, E three's coming. Better book my hotel and stuff." Yeah. And then all and then of a sudden, sudden, yeah, I hope you got the type of hotel you can get refunds on. Yeah, and then you get flights and yeah. stuff. Um, Briar Ray says, Briar Rye says, at this point, it's easier to list the companies who are going. Funny you say that. Here's the list uh, from GamerRevolution.com. They say <laughs> Ubisoft and Konami. Ubisoft pulled out today. Yeah. So that's not true. Literally only Konami is showing up at E3. I doubt that's going to last much longer. Yeah. I, I literally think they're there. They're, they're on this list because they are not in tune with the video game industry. No, right not at all. Yeah. I think that they're here because they have no idea yeah. what's going on. Uh, also, I think Verizon is, is going to be there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Notable gaming giant <laughs> Verizon. Yes. Uh, further down the article, it says, in contrast to the deep concerns about E3, Feelings are mixed to positive about Jeff Keighley's Play Days at an in-person media-only event that last year took place over two days in early June around the same time as E3 and which has been confirmed again for this year. Several people we spoke to confirmed that they had games locked in for Play Days and a few mentioned they expected more games to be present this year than last year. That said, the event is still significantly smaller than E3 has been historically and as opposed to its first run in 2022, may not be composed almost entirely of hand-on demos. Should we go to play days? <laughs> <laughs> Just to show some support for play days? Yeah, for friend of the show Jeff Keeley. <laughs> yeah. I didn't I didn't know it was called play days. I thought it was called something else. I mean his thing is called Summer Summer Games, Games Fest. Fest. Yeah. I don't I don't even see anything about play days. Yeah, this year. Uh, this was last year. Play Days is a pilot program this year. Yeah, I don't think it's announced for this year at yeah. all. Yeah. Uh, per an email to staff, as seen by IGN, Lance. Uh, yeah, Lance. Uh, Fensterman, the company's president, the uh, the Repop president for the past fourteen years, is preparing to step down, oh, leaving God. VP and Repop veteran since two thousand and four, Michael Kisken, to fill his shoes. So there's internal shakeup going on in Repop mm -hmm. uh, right before what was supposed to be like their biggest project yet. You know, I heard that Repop uh, does the advertising for Nintendo Life. I don't know if I'm leaking information, but they <laughs> they uh, they do advertising. Like, I didn't okay. know that they I thought they were just an event. company. Yeah. I didn't know they they were like an advert, like a like a website advertising Me like, like thing. 
that I found that. Well, I guess you know it makes sense because there's a lot of advertising at these yeah. freaking conventions. You Readpop.com services. People buy ad space on the badges yeah. for these events. Uh, who's in? Who's out? IGN reached out to a number of major publishers ahead of uh, publication to ask if they were able to commit to to, to confirm E3 attendance this year. Or were where applicable their plans for satellite events around E3? Those that did not respond in time for publication include EA, Square Enix, basically everybody. Yeah. IGN understands that more publishers plan to skip E3, but that they have not yet made a formal announcement. Of those that did respond, Sega confirmed to IGN that it would not be attending the show at uh, after all. Saying in a statement, after careful consideration, we have decided not to participate in E3 2023 as an exhibit. Band, Bandai Namco declined to provide an update on E3, but did confirm it would be attending Play Days. Mm-hmm. Tencent confirmed through a spokesperson that they're not attending. Devolver Digital, which has historically never officially attended E3, but has multiple years running up, set up a shot, set up shot in an adjacent parking lot, set up shop in an adjacent, mm-hmm. a little typo. I yeah. uh, provided the, I forgot that they always have. Yeah. They're they always literally across the street. Yeah. Yeah. I remember they had a, a genital jousting, uh, uh, like big arcade. And, yeah. and it was four dildos that you play with. Yeah. While we always root for the success of an industry gathering that promotes great games, we have never officially attended E3 and do not plan to do so this year, unfortunately. We will also confirm we will not be hosting satellite events this year in Los Angeles, but look forward to returning to our beloved parking lot to do so if the opportunity arises for a future LACC-based event. We are happy to report that we are well underway in the production of our annual Devolver Direct scheduled for June, which will which we will share news about soon. So not even Devolver Digital is going to be in the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's how little E3 is going to happen. Yeah. Devolver isn't even going to be outside of it. So uh, I can't say uh, I'm surprised. I uh, thought this would happen. Yeah. Did I tweet about that? Did I? Did I? I feel like I made the assumption that, that when they announced that E3 was going to happen, I think I was like, then no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> when they announced that, I'm pretty sure I was like, yeah. not going to happen. There's no way. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't going to go before. So, I'm not. Uh, well, if it's not going to happen, this. you're not, you know, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah. I'm looking up Read Pop. First of all, Read Pop does not have a dedicated Wikipedia page. It's weird ass parent company Relics has one. Okay. Which I did not know it had a weird ass parent company. According to Read Pop's website, they own a lot of websites, including Digital Foundry, Eurogamer, uh, GameIndustry.biz, uh, Nintendo, Nintendo Life, Outside Xbox, Outside Extra. Pure Xbox. Oh, they first, own a Nintendo Square. Life? That's what this is saying. Oh, that Reed makes Pop's sense. family of digital video game websites are among the most popular in the world. The whole network has a strong focus on editorial credibility, quality, and community. Wow. Looks like the industry... Looks like we have a new industry... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a, like a giant? Like a new industry... Yeah. Rock, paper, shotgun. I mean, a lot of... G 24-7. A lot of the reason we don't like uh, E3 is because it's run by the ESA, which is supposed to be a conglomerate of all of the video game companies, but they end up working in nobody's best interest. Yeah. Now, you got Reed Pop, which apparently is owned by all of the game journalists. Well, no. Reed Pop owns a bunch of game journalists. Right, right, right. So... It's like the exact opposite of the ESA. Yeah. Instead of being the game companies, it's the game journalist outlet. Yeah. Very strange. The plot thickens. Yeah. But I guess that's uh, kind of what you would want out of a out of a an event. I mean, yeah, you want people to know about your event. But, but then like- but then the problem is you need the game companies to show up. Yeah. So now you're directly you're a you're a news outlet that is directly being paid by the companies you have to rate and review. Yeah. That's where things get dicey. Things are getting really yes. bizarre here yes. in the games industry. <laughs> uh. Well, 
Glad that's not working out. <laughs> Glad that that whole thing just yeah. fell on its face. Yeah. It's sad when dreams like die like this, you know? Uh like you know I, I still like I still think about the like I would have mentioned this on the show. The dream of E3 when we were younger. Yeah, like, it was there's a lot of mystique around and, it. And like the like y'all one of these days I'm gonna go and then you go and it's like the dumpster fire and yeah. there's all these bad feelings about it. And I've I've seen people like, you know, say wax nostalgic for it. Not Particularly for going to the event and covering the event, but like hanging out with friends. Hanging out with friends is, is, is good. It's always good. That's why I like yeah. PAX. Yeah. It's better there, for that. There's honestly. other better events for that. Um, yeah. Pe- people, most of the people watching this are nostalgic for E3 yeah. because of the announcements, which could happen regardless of the event or not. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot what I wanted to say about E3. Oh, Devolver said they're always rooting for big video game events to to work out. Yeah. Not me. I don't like E3, and I'm <laughs> glad that, uh, yeah, in a spiteful way, I'm glad that it's not working out. Because fuck them. If you if you confused, I have a whole video about it. I think yeah. it was E3 2019. What was the first one that didn't happen? 2020. I think the video was called E3 2020. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Uh, here's another sad thing. Microsoft is not doing the Xbox Game Pass for a dollar anymore. Nope. Microsoft has stopped its $1 trial offer for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate and PC Game Pass. The trial has been available for years with brief periods where it wasn't available uh, in certain markets. And it now looks like Microsoft is considering a new promotion instead. We have stopped our previous introductory offer for Game Pass Ultimate and PC Game Pass and are evaluating different marketing promotions for new members in the future says Kari Perez, head of global communications at Xbox, in a statement to The Verge. The $1 trial has allowed people to sign up for Game Pass uh, for a month before the full Game, Pre- full Game Pass Ultimate subscription kicks in at $14.99 a month or $9.99 a month for PC or console-only subscriptions. It's been a great way to recommend the service to a friend or family member, but we'll now uh, have to wait and see what these different marketing promotions are for new members. Microsoft has also been working on its friends and family plan for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. The plan lets you share your Xbox Game Pass Ultimate benefits with up to four other family or friends. Um, pricing in Ireland is set at uh, 21 uh, euros. 21 euros and 99 cents, nearly $24, working out to less than $5 per person. Microsoft expanded this friends and family plan to New Zealand, South Africa, Chile, Hungary, uh, Israel, and Sweden recently but it's still not available in many European markets or the U.S. and U.K. Um, This $1 trial removal uh, could be a sign that Microsoft is getting ready to expand friends and family even further after trialing this new subscription for less than a year. Microsoft has also uh, recently opened its PC Game Pass subscription to 40 new countries. Game Pass is now available in 86 markets total uh, with new availability across Europe, North Africa, and the Middle East. That's really sad because that's always been the best sell for yeah. Game Pass. And it probably got them a lot of subscriptions. Yes. But I guess they're at the point now where uh, they're the, the um, awareness is there. Like people yeah. already know about Game Pass. That, yeah. I guess that $1 thing was more so to like get people to try it. Yeah. And people tried it already. It also locks you in because you have to put your credit card in and, they, and then it renews the next month. Um, but they want to get set the barrier to entry really low so that people try it out and then they tell other people about how great the experience is. Yeah. So I guess enough the awareness is there, enough people have it, and they don't need to. Lo- they don't need to eat that cost anymore. They yeah. can just do it for ten dollars a month. But that is sad because it was so easy to mm-hmm. tell people about it because it was only a dollar. Yeah. To start and now. It's the full ten dollars. Yeah, but I guess ten dollars isn't so bad either. Well, no, but if you want the whole experience, does that one dollar got you Game Pass Ultimate? Oh yeah, it's fifteen. Yeah. Okay, that's too much. Yeah, honestly. So that's where that I think that's where the problem comes in. That's three coffee. Yeah, can't do it. So I mean, maybe they are working. They said they are working on something else. Maybe it is the friends and family program. Maybe it's you know like a better introductory deal. You know, I'm a big get, fan of friends get... and family, but twenty five ish dollars. 
Yeah. It's kind of a lot. A month. Yeah. It's kind of a lot. So, we'll see. That's sad. Let's yeah. talk real quick about Sonic Origins Plus. Yes, uh, Sonic Origins Plus is bringing even more classic Sonic games to modern consoles when it launches on Sonic's birthday, June 23rd, 2023. It adds all 12 Game Gear games, a playable Amy to Sonic the Hedgehog 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles in Sonic CD, and Knuckles will be playable in Sonic CD. We talked about this already. Because uh, it doesn't have Sonic Chaos. No. The... 3DS eShop denied. Oh, Sonic okay, Chaos. okay. This okay. will have Sonic Chaos. Okay. But Game Gear versions, which uh, apparently are zoomed in. I didn't know this. So, yes. we uh, On our backlog episode of Sonic Chaos, I'll bring this up. Oh, okay. Uh, Sonic 1, 2, and Chaos on the Game Gear were also released on the Master System. And on the Master System, the screen is formatted to take up the whole uh, screen, like the whole, like the whole of a television screen. For the Game Gear, because it's got a smaller screen, everything shrunk down. Right. And, like, some parts of the level are even cropped out. So you don't get the whole yeah. like, viewing experience. It does feel a little cramped. Yes. So it is a little strange that you didn't get the Master System version. But well, I mean, I'm sh- these are... So the Sonic games in Origins are... They're not ports. They're, they're completely redone. Because you have the widescreen aspect ratio. You have a new live system. You have all these new things added to the games. So they're redone. These are, to me, I'm pretty sure these are just emulated game right. games. Like they're right. not redone from the ground up. So it just looks like it's a quick thing added to the collection to add more value to it. I will say, pretty cool that they added uh, uh, Amy. Yes. To all the retro Sonic games. Yes. I think that's pretty cool. That's cool. And it's cool that they finally added Knuckles to Sonic CD because he wasn't playable previously. Uh,. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, this new content will be available uh, as a ten dollars expansion for those who already own Sonic Origins, while those who uh, while those who don't can purchase it and all the regular Sonic Origins content in a single package for forty dollars. Uh, this hasn't been received well. No, people are upset because we're upset because Sonic Origins uh, was kind of broken when it launched, yeah. and I think it's still broken. Yeah, there's still some things that they never fixed. It's bad emulation. Uh, well, it's re- redone, but it's it's it runs bad. And, yeah, and it runs bad on the Switch, which doesn't make any sense because it's just old fucking yeah. games. Um, John Line uh, Lineman tweeted, uh, "Just fix the poor image scaling." Come on, guys. I think he's a digital foundry. Yeah, here, John right? Lineman. Yeah, Lineman. Yeah. Uh, Christian Whitehead responded to him and said, uh. Dude, such a crying shame the RSDK scaling shaders aren't used. Yeah. So he, Christian Whitehead, developed, you tell everybody. So Christian Whitehead was. was the guy who uh, created the iOS versions of Sonic 1, 2, and Sonic CD. Um, and he's, he helped spearhead Sonic Mania. Um, Sonic Origins is using his tech and his concepts Yeah. for Sonic 1, 2. It's an engine that he made. The retro engine, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sega is using that, but not him and not the team behind, well, part of the team that made Sonic Mania. And they didn't let the team behind Sonic, they didn't give that team enough time or resources to do it properly. This was just basically rushed out the door as soon as it was acceptable. Yeah. I think that that's a lot of the problem with it. So it was interesting to see him. Uh, somebody was a fan of Sonic games made Sonic fan games and then worked on official Sonic games. He's out at, and they're using his tech and he's out there being like, they did it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so that's unfortunate and stupid. Yeah, it's really sucks. Uh, it's, it sucks because you can't get Sonic three right now and Sonic three and knuckles. This is kind of the only way to do it. Well, you can't get these games anywhere because as the article points out, the publisher delisted classic Sonic games from other platforms, essentially forcing players to purchase Sonic Origins if they wanted to revisit the Bluebird's origin. And this is the worst way to play them. Yeah. So uh, that really sucks. And Sonic 3 uh, still has different music and shit. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's, still, it's, it's the best way to play these games is probably... To, I mean, you do get widescreen, which is kind of yes. cool. Widescreen does like change things up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. 
But the best way to play Sonic 3 might just be to get a fucking Sega Genesis and hook it up. Yeah. As janky as it is. As janky or, as you need to do it. Or, as or we were talking about like 20 minutes ago, the E word. Oh, emulation. oh, oh, okay. Emulation. Yeah, yeah. Emulation. I was thinking uh, something different. Oh. Mm. Ejaculate. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, look, I always say that it's fine to emulate something that isn't available. Yeah. Uh, these games are available. They're just worse. So in this case, you're kind of showing them, hey, uh, we don't want this. Yeah. We wanted it like this. Yeah. You know? And I think and the cool thing about uh, ROMs you can find of Sonic 3 and Knuckles is that uh, fans have recreated those games in different ways. So there's like a version of Sonic 3 and Knuckles that actually puts the levels in the correct storyline order. Because oh. they were released out of order when they put the game out initially, because to break it up and make sure release date. Interesting. So there's that. There's one with like a whole set of features where you can use different physics. You can have new characters in it. There's all these different versions of Sonic Three and Knuckles that you can find, including uh, just the straight original release. The Konami man points out that there's probably also a widescreen mod. Yeah, I've only ever done widescreen for um, Mario World. There was a widescreen mod. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, so I'd imagine they have it for Sonic yeah. also. All right. Anyway, uh, what else? Uh, TMNT Last Ronin. Uh, a new, very different style of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game is currently in development. An adaptation of The Last Ronin, the 2020 graphic novel they told a grim, futuristic story about the turtles. Like the comic, The Last Ronin video game adaptation will be a darker, more mature take on the typically colorful Ninja Turtles, according to Doug Rosen, Senior Vice President for Games and Emerging Media at Paramount Global, the rights holders of the Ninja Turtles. In an interview with Polygon last week, Rosen likened the upcoming third-person action role-play game to Sony's recent God of War titles and said it will be authentic to the story of The Last Ronin, um, which is set in a future where only one turtle has survived. While other Ninja Turtles games, like last year's Shredder's Revenge, are typically about playing as all four turtles, The Last Ronin will be a primarily single-player game, though Rosen post, uh, posited that other characters will be playable in flashback sequences, similar to how uh, the comic series play out, primary action is said to be centered on the only surviving turtle uh the identity of that turtle uh was a mystery on when the last run came out and it's one i will not don't spoil yeah here. don't tell no. people because that's such a good reveal yeah no i'm gonna say like if you if you're unfamiliar with it the last run is about literally the last ninja turtle to survive yeah. um and when the series starts all you know about him is that he wears a black bandana and he carries all of the turtle's weapons. So the identity of this turtle is left ambiguous. Yeah. And, and, so, the, and, and you find out in the end of the, the first, first issue. issue. And I, I didn't know who... who I think it might have been spoiled for me a little bit. But I didn't yeah. know, like, basically anything about The Last Ronin. Yeah. So I just read the first issue. Yeah. Like a year ago. Yeah. And I was like, and that was fucking sick. So yeah. now I want to read the whole thing. Yeah. It, it's a very good series. Like, yeah. it... Like, I, it's one of those series like this this caught on and like outside of just people who read turtles comics this is caught on like the greater yeah ninja turtles fandom because it was just that unique and different and cool and it's a story that has been in the works since the 80s when peter laird and kevin eastman originally created the turtles mm -hmm. because it was around the time of dark knight returns like the older batman and like the last adventures of batman was like uh, like on people's minds so like let's do that with the ninja turtles and unlike other attempts at knocking off the Dark Knight Returns, this one was actually good. Yeah. So. Uh, I kind of want to read the comic before this comes out. Yeah. I'm not surprised that they're going to do. I'm surprised they're doing a uh, Last Ronin video game so soon. Um, but at the same time, I'm not surprised because it has caught on so much in like pop culture. Right it's now. a really good idea for a video game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Especially because like. Turtles games are really cool, but you kind of want to play. There's an implication of multiplayer. Yeah. Because it's a, it's four turtles. Yeah. Uh, this is just one. You're the last one. I And also, <laughs> too, like the way they said it, like a big God of War style RPG. Mm -hmm. I think the last Ronin, like because Ninja Turtle games are traditionally just beat em ups. Yeah. There's no variety to them, even though you can do a lot with the Ninja Turtles. I think the last Ronin is a good way to put the Ninja Turtles in a different style of gameplay yeah. that like hasn't really been seen before. Yeah. You know, because you're just focused on the one turtle. Yeah. 
Uh, like the last Ronin comic book series, the video game will target an older audience, just like the recent collaboration with Call of Duty that brings Shredder to the Activision shooter. What the uh, fuck? You didn't see this? No. Yeah, Shredder is now in Call of Duty. Uh, Rosen said there are opportunities for multiple TMNT games aimed at young audiences and more mature age groups, and that Paramount can take multiple approaches to the franchise and not dial back to make the game something it shouldn't be. Uh, the last Ronin video game is as being adapted by an unnamed studio uh, and is likely a few years off from release, Rosen said. But like throwback beat em up Shredder's Revenge developed by Tribute Games and .emu and the Cowabunga, Cowabunga Collection uh, collaboration with Digital Eclipse and Konami, uh, Rosen said that they've found the right partner to adapt The Last Ronin into an ambitious AAA game. Rosen said to expect more details on The Last Ronin and much more from Ninja Turtles and video games in the coming months and years. In the near term, fans of the Ninja Turtles will soon see the Heroes in a Half Shell showing up in Roblox. <laughs> Yay! In a new game set for release alongside Mutant Mayhem, the new animated movie. Uh, yeah, so we're getting Ninja Turtles stuff this year, but we're not getting The Last Ronin. I barely ever play Warzone anymore. I yeah. want to go in and buy just Shredder. Just play a Shredder. Yeah, I want to get Shredder. <laughs> Make sure I have it's, him. He looks it's, freaking sick. It's weird because like when the first Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtles came out mm-hmm. and like the storyline leaked, it was leaked that Shredder was going to be a military commando in yep. in charge of like a black ops battalion known as the Foot. And he wasn't going to be, he was his name was going to be Eric Schrader instead of the Shredder. The whole thing about the turtles is that there's this like dark, like like uh, it's like, a, like martial arts underworld. Yeah, that's like hiding under New no, York City. Like, yeah, yeah. So, but you know, because of Michael Bay, he's like, nah, we got to make the military. There's the military like a whole cool. another world, yeah. like uh, outside of like the normal New York. You yeah, know? and uh, like a John Wick thing. Yeah, and uh, no, they 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 wanted to ruin it. Yeah, I didn't see those movies because I heard they were terrible. I heard I saw the first one. It was absolute dog shit like not even kidding it is like the one of the worst adaptations i've ever seen the second one is better if only because it could only go up okay okay and it wasn't that much better uh we have uh kind of a lot of uh uh sony microsoft shit to, activision to go, news uh, yeah yeah let's try to get through this as quickly all right as possible. so the first thing so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, Arcane. Uh, they're they're working on Redfall. Yeah. Uh, they are announcing that they're trying to drop the always online requirement for even for single player uh, games because before it was announced that even if you're playing single player it was going to be always online. Yeah. And now Arcane is looking like they're trying to drop that requirement. Yes. From uh, Redfall because they said like we listen like yeah. like 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 we we know that. Uh... There are people who live in places where there are out- outages or their broadband is shitty or they're competing with their family members because their mom's streaming a movie or their brother's on another device. And so I think it's a legitimate critique, yes. says somebody who works on the game. Yes, um, which is nice to hear. Uh, it's a nice change of pace from uh, Warner Brothers saying that uh, Sh- Suicide Squad is going to be always online even if you play single player. Yeah. And here's the studio being like, okay, we're sorry, we'll fix it. Yeah, it makes That's a lot nice. of sense. Yeah, uh, it is very stupid to have it locked to to being online. Yeah, it it, it makes you it makes you unable to play the yeah, game sometimes, exactly. especially if it's just single player. Yeah, uh, but you know what's not stupid though? Locking the game to a single platform, which allegedly Microsoft had told them to do. Uh, That's, no, that, that is stupid. That segues into the whole Microsoft, Activision, Sony kerfuffle. Right. Um. Yes. So. According to Redfall game designer Harvey Smith, who in a conversation with IGN France said Microsoft's stance on Redfall development was no PS5 after the takeover of Bethesda. We were acquired by Microsoft and in a change with a capital C, Smith told the website during a press event uh, via Google Translate, the game uh, they came in and said no PlayStation 5 were focusing on Xbox, PC, and Game Pass. Smith described the resulting focus on Xbox and PC as a good decision, noting that the move helped uh, help support Game Pass and meant one less platform to worry about, one less complexity. So, Sony's whole concern about buying up Microsoft, buying up developers and making them not develop games for another platform, 
right there. Yeah, it actually happened. Right there. It actually happened. They Microsoft removed uh, Redfall from yes. PlayStation. Uh, no, they haven't. Said a statement from Microsoft. Oh, oh excuse me. Uh, we have not. We haven't pulled any games from PlayStation. Uh, starts the statement from Microsoft. This is according to uh, VG. Of course, they're gonna say that. This is according to VG twenty four seven, owned by Read Pop. Uh, in <laughs> fact, we've, uh, we've expanded our footprint of games that we've shipped from Sony's PlayStation since our acquisition of Zenimax. And the first two games we shipped after closing were PlayStation 5 exclusives. We did the same thing since our closing of Minecraft as we extended the reach of that franchise. All of the games that are available on PlayStation when we acquired Zenimax in March of 2021 are still available on PlayStation. And we have continued to do uh, the content updates on PlayStation and PC. We have always said that the future decisions were uh, on whether to distribute Zenimax games on other consoles will be made on a case by case basis. So what the fuck does that mean about Redfall? That they, they did, they did. Redfall is not on PlayStation. I think they're they're trying to skirt around. They're they're trying to say like, you listen. The first two games we released after buying Zenimax were released on PlayStation. The reason why those were released on PlayStation, that's Deathloop and uh, Ghostwire, is because they were announced as PlayStation yeah. exclusives yeah. before Microsoft bought Zenimax. So they kind of had their hands tied. Yeah. Redfall wasn't even announced when they acquired Zenimax. So Microsoft could just be like, no. <laughs> yeah. And they did. Yeah. And it's been proven that they did. Yeah. So so they're 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 not admitting to Redfall. They're 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 trying to say they're they're trying to save face. They're trying to say yeah, they are. You know, no, we didn't do that. It's all just a misunderstanding, guys. Yeah, that they, they they're again in the middle of a legal battle, yes. so they have to make it look like they're playing fair. A legal battle that is turning on their side because the <laughs> the UK regulars side with Microsoft over Call of Duty concerns on uh over PlayStation Call of Duty concerns. Does that mean it's over? No, but oh, it looks God. like it's it's favoring in Microsoft. How many different ways can The Verge make the Xbox logo? <laughs> they, they've done this like a million different ways. I've seen it three different ways just now in this episode. Look, man, they, they paid somebody a lot of money to redesign their website terribly. <laughs> so they got to use all that graphic design money for something. Yeah. Uh, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, has now sided with Microsoft over concerns that the software giant could remove Call of Duty from PlayStation if this proposed Activision Blizzard deal is approved. The regulator still has concerns about the deal's impact on cloud gaming market and will complete Ooh. its investigation by the end of April. Having considered the additional evidence provided, we have now provisionally concluded that the merger will not result in substantial lessening of competition in console gaming services because the cost to Microsoft of withholding Call of Duty from PlayStation would outweigh any gains from taking such action says Martin Coleman, chairman of the independent panel of experts conducting the CMA's investigation. So so it would kind of make sense for them to approve the deal. Yeah. But then force Call of Duty to be on other cloud services. Yeah. Which I think at this point, Microsoft is willing to agree with. Yeah. Because it means that their merger with Activision Blizzard can go through. It would also mean that they get a they get a cut they they get yeah. they get royalties in PlayStation Plus Premium and yeah. stuff, and that also is great for us because currently you can't play Call of Duty via yes. cloud services at all. Did you know? So the Xbox starting with the Xbox One, Microsoft systems have had a Blu-ray drive in in them. Yeah. Do you know who gets a cut? of all blu-ray drive sales sony yes because sony invented the blu-ray player yeah so it it happens already like microsoft yeah. has to give sony some money to use blu-ray drives also sony uses microsoft cloud services don't they? yes yeah yeah so fucking all sh it's all they're all working together all anyway big incestuous yeah get together um but yeah uh we have we have considered the parties and third party submission on our LTV model and modified the inputs uh, where appropriate, says the CMA in a filing published today. Based on our updated results, our quantitative modeling indicates that the total foreclosure strategy would lead to significant net financial loss for the parties under all scenarios uh, that we consider plausible. 
So basically what they're saying is they determined that if Microsoft doesn't release uh, Call of Duty on other systems, it's fina- it doesn't make any financial sense for them to not do that. Yeah. So that's why there's no worry about them not putting it on other systems. Yeah. Which is which we all knew. Yes. Uh, f- not only that, but Japan's competition regulator has concluded that it has no issue with Microsoft proposed acquisitions of Activision Blizzard and will not block the deal. That is interesting. Yes. Because of, of all countries, I would think Japan would be the, the, the most against it because... Yeah. Uh, PlayStation had home field field advantage. The Japanese Fair Trade Commission has published a statement in which uh, it says that it has reviewed the transaction and reached the conclusion that it is unlikely to result in a substantially restraining competition in any particular field or trade. It added that it has notified the parties that the JFTC will not issue a cease and desist order resulting in competition, resulting in the completion of its review. In a document expanding the decision, the JFTC said that the deal isn't didn't violate any of the anti-competition legislature, saying the integration falls under the safe harbor criteria for vertical business combinations. Uh, so yeah, Japan approved it. I think Brazil approved it. It looks like the 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 UK is going to approve it. So what does this mean about America? They have to approve it. We still haven't approved it yet. Over no, here? not yet. Okay. There was I forgot who like some senator was like, well, you know, the Sony owns like ninety nine percent of the Japanese video game market, so that's a monopoly right there. You know, just forgetting about all Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, fun. it would it would kind of behoove America to put this through because then it puts an American company in power in the, in the, in the, yeah. in the video game space. Yeah. Because right now the biggest players are Japan and China. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, America's, we, we're not, we're no small dog in no. the fight though. We, we're doing pretty well, good. We're all, you know, America makes a lot of like the top selling third party content. Right. You know, exactly. In terms of like the platform holder, you know, we're dead last. Right. 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 Unless you count PC. Uh, and one last thing about it. One last thing. Bobby Kotick has had it up to here with (laughs) Sony and their shenanigans. In an email sent, um, who did he send this email to? Doesn't matter. He sent down an email and, uh, Kotaku uh, managed to get it. And he said, the good news is regulators who initially had concerns about console competition are starting to better understand our industry. The data and evidence Microsoft has presented are tilting the scales um, you may have seen statements from Sony, including an argument that if this deal goes through, Microsoft could release deliberately buggy versions of our games on PlayStation. We all know our passionate players would be the first to hold Microsoft accountable for keeping its promises of content and quality uh, parity. And all of us who work so hard on delivering the best games in our industry are too deep, uh, care too deeply about our players to ever launch subpar versions of our games. Sony has even admitted that they aren't actually concerned about Call of Duty agreement, and um, they would like they would just like to prevent our merger from happening. This is the important part. Uh, this is obviously disappointing behavior from a partner for almost thirty years, but we will not allow Sony's behavior to affect our long term relationship. PlayStation players know we will continue to deliver the best games possible on Sony platforms as we have since the launch of the PlayStation. So, in other words. You're the problem, Sony, is what he's saying. Uh, I saw this reference in a tweet. So Bobby Kotick is saying that Sony is uh, Sony has some uh, like uh, nefarious behavior. Yeah. Uh, in in this whole situation, and somebody referenced that and said, uh, "It's interesting that Bobby Kotick has all of this nefarious behavior and is sweeping it under the rug just so he could say that Sony's having nefarious yeah. behavior." Uh, also. He's not even going to be around with this no, goes through, but hopefully. He, he stands to make a pretty penny from this going yes. through. So he's got a lot of... He's got a lot riding on this. <laughs> I want to reference... I want to mention Sly Cooper fan. Just put it in the chat. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, an Axios article um, that says, 11 members of Congress argue Sony is unfairly hurting Xbox in Japan. And I guess that's what you were... That's what I was... That's what you were referencing, yeah. yeah. I misread that and thought that they were Japanese Congress people. No, but yeah. no, they're American Congress people uh, arguing that Sony is unfairly hurting yeah. Xbox in Japan. Which I mean makes sense. Why an American politician would say that? Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, the uh, the Republican letter alleges that Sony PlayStation has 98% of the high-end console market in Japan. Uh, signs deals designed to keep it uh, to keep hit game, Japanese games from Microsoft's Xbox and says such moves may violate Japan's antitrust laws. Uh, yeah. So it looks like this thing's going to go through. There might be some stipulation, and it will probably be the cloud thing, if if anything. Yeah, but I mean, as we've seen, Xbox is willing to, you know play nice in order to for this deal to go through there should be regulations there should be the the government should be able to step in and say you have to do it this way yeah um that that's all that's only healthy i think the the big problem is though um you know the the government does not understand video games yes so they're the the rules that they would come up with would just be so asinine and dumb and backwards yes you know Kind of like what's going on with the whole TikTok hearing. <laughs> oh yes, I've that, been seeing that some was, of that. Oh my god! I watched some of it live on TikTok. I want that that poor man trying to explain to a senator how Wi-Fi works. Yeah, it just hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was very it was yeah. very strange. Now, some of it makes sense because yeah, like all tech, all these apps do take our data. Yeah, right. And China does have laws where companies need to give information without any warning, you know? Yeah. That is a concern. But uh, it's also a concern with our companies yeah. here in America that, that that take our data. Our government just isn't... I mean, they could just take the data anyway, but there's yeah. nothing in law that states that they're allowed to have that. We had Apple fighting against giving data to the American government. Um, So there just needs to be a set of regulations, just like we're talking about. Like we need politicians who understand the technology to be able to be like, hey, you just need to keep our data here in America. Yeah. Which is what they're trying to do. Right. TikTok is trying to do that. They have their project Texas that they kept referencing. I'm convinced that if, boomers use tiktok this would not be a problem no because boomers use facebook and they're still around even though we all know what like what shady shit they do yeah and it's it's because it's uh because kids use tiktok because kids use tiktok and they use it to say things that might not necessarily uh, that that boomers might not necessarily agree yes. with yeah yeah specifically like i was reading an article like specifically like one of the highest usage of tiktok is like young girls and anytime like young girls get into something, that's scary because anything yeah. that like gives too precious. Yeah, exactly. It gives yeah, them money like autonomy. Minds. Like, no, 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 you don't want to do that. Just I, go in the kitchen. I will say there is something to social media that kind of creates hive minds. Yes. And something about TikTok creates like the most like the biggest hive mind yeah you know it's just so rapid fire information everybody on there kind of has the same sort of like cadence and like uh and uh thought patterns and shit but like is that necessarily bad yeah no it's as long as they're not you know trying to do anything nefarious then what's the what's the problem they're just sharing ideas and it's not like so wrong with that you know every social media out there has like bad spread of information and like hive minds and things like that you right know? there's a whole subculture on instagram like promoting you know anorexia yeah you know how do you stop that eat something yes <laughs> uh then you got twitter who is fucking elon over here uh, starting this- april 15th only verified accounts will be eligible to be in the for you recommendations and this also means you will be required to have verification in order to vote in polls so so he he clarified a whole day later and said for you could you can still appear in if they're following you you will still appear in for you even if you're not uh verified it's just for you recommendations so it's different I like action figures I like collecting action figures mm-hmm. I am not going to go and buy Hasbro and like tell them how to do their job because right. I don't know the first thing about making and selling action figures i just like buying them and putting them on my desk and putting them in nice poses that's what elon musk has done he likes using twitter so he figures he'll buy it because he knows how to run it better clearly he doesn't he He, just knows how to use it. he knows nothing about user experience also 
this is this shows his like weird sort of politics. Yeah. Where this is such a fucked up allegory. Voting in polls requires verification, which is seven dollars a month. Yeah. You need to pay seven dollars a month in order to vote in polls on Twitter. How is that free speech? Yeah. How like that significant? And he's cuts. he bought Twitter to preserve free speech. Yeah. That, that now, which, which now your polls are skewed towards people who can afford a subscription. Yeah. This on top of like banning people for making jokes about him, banning mm. people for reporting about him. You know, it, it's it's very clear his pitch is not what he is creating. No. You know. The whole like move fast and break things or whatever the fuck the saying is to try and get things to work. It's it's just breaking things. Yeah, it's breaking a lot. Yeah, it's not looking good for Twitter. And I'm the asshole who still uses it every day. I know I use it every day. Also, I can't get enough of it. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Last thing, last piece of news. Here. Yes. Uh, we have multiverses is shutting down. For at least at least six months. Yeah. What? I heard. It, I thought it was for longer than that. That's insane. Early twenty twenty four. The multiverse, multiverse, multiverses. Goddamn. Yeah. The Warner Brothers take on Smash Brothers is shutting down its open beta for at least six months ahead of the game's full launch in early twenty. Oh, I didn't even know it wasn't out yet. It was apparently it was in beta. Oh wait, you had to pay for that though. No, the game was free. Oh, it's free to play. It's you have to, to play. pay you for pay the characters. For, yeah, for those, the characters. So they're just, they're just, sorry, goodbye. You yeah. just can't play it. And you're not getting a refund. On April 4th, multiverses will be removed from digital stores. And on June 25th, servers will be shut down. If you've previously downloaded the free-to-play game, you'll still be able to reinstall it following the shutdown, allowing you limited offline access to the training room known as the lab and local matches. Okay, you can do local matches. Yeah. Temporary shutdown is because we know there's still a lot of work to do. Okay, so why? Just <laughs> updated. As a result, we have a clearer vision of whatever. That's so stupid. It's 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 very dumb. It's very bad communication and intent. Uh, this is why early access is dumb. Yeah, paying Especially for early for like access, a high is profile dumb. property like a Warner Brothers multiverse game. Yeah, you know to to come out like when did it come out like last year, and now all of a sudden like oh it was open beta so we could do, we could do this if we wanted to. That's so annoying. It's it's awful. You know, you allowed people to buy characters and now you're just going to close the whole thing down and come back at a nebulous later date. Yeah. That's ridiculous. This is why early access is 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 toxic because yeah. shit like this could happen. They could just never finish the game. It won best fighting game at the Game Awards. Because it was the only fighting game that came out <laughs> last year. Yeah. It was up against some real dumb shit. There was yeah. a fight. There was a game that was labeled a fight. Oh, it was a Sifu. So, yeah. Yeah, that was a fighting game, yeah. but it wasn't a fighting game. I don't know. This, That's dumb. Yeah, this is That's fucking stupid. This is atrocious, honestly. I'm like I like I didn't play multiverses, but like I'm mad at this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh okay. Uh that's all the news. It's time for this. Twitter the hey! Twitter the Twitter the this is by Super Mario Broth. Uh, it is a 1996 Super Mario 64 manga suggests that one-up mushrooms grow from the bodies of dead Marios, perpetuating the cycle of life and death. That's what it is. It also doesn't make any sense because if a Mario dies, yeah, where's the next one coming from? Yeah, you need it. You need the other one to come from. There had to have you know? been a Mario Prime. Well, there's a Mario Prime, right? And then he dies, and yeah. he creates a one-up mushroom. Who's right. getting that one up mushroom? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's the question. So there's got to be a Mario like creature that died, created a one up mushroom, yeah. and then Mario. Whatever. Yeah. I want this original artwork. <laughs> I want I want to purchase this. Or at the very least, like a nice high quality print. I need people to send me different storefronts yeah. to get manga artwork so I can sit there and 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 try to find something like this because yeah. i i need i need the original hand-drawn piece from this i will pay a pretty penny for yeah. this 
I almost put in a tweet of the week because I just saw it. It was funny. Uh, Ice T. Oh. <laughs> posted a. He posted like a, like an ice cold fact, and it was a picture image, and it said the illusion of options really got y'all out here fumbling genuine people. It was written in Comic Sans or something okay. very similar to Comic Sans, and somebody tweeted at him, "Ice, what is with this font? I love you, man, but come on, use Impact font." Oh no. <laughs> So Ice-T just responded, I don't give a flying fuck about fonts. Weirdo shit. (laughs) (laughs) And I just want to say thank you, Ice-T, for finally saying what's been on my mind for years. Oh, I need to to find that and retweet that. How do you spell his name? Ice-T. His his handle is Final Level. Final Level. Okay. I forgot he's a gamer. Yeah. It's just, it's... I've never, like, I understand some fonts look better than others, but my God, people get really nerdy about fonts. I get real, uh, yeah. I know, but, like, come on, man. Just fonts. (laughs) I just retweeted them. I don't, I do not give a flying fuck, and fuck is all caps, about fonts. Weirdo (laughs) shit. He's got to emphasize it. (laughs) All right. All right, now we will talk to you guys yes. real quick. I have to remember to open up Discord so we can talk to people from last week's Wolfden Podcast or from the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Luabic says, uh, hearing the bad company, hearing that bad company too is being, is getting the plug pulled makes me really sad. The reason I got an Xbox in the first place was so I could play Battlefield Bad Company 2 with my older brother. We had grown apart at the time because he's 14 years older and was knee-deep in starting his adult life. Staying up late playing on Xbox Live brought us back together. I miss those days. Yeah, it's it's a shame. Like, that's what I'm talking about. People love these games. They want to find ways to play them. So. Did they pull the plug yet? Because uh, it, soonish. It could be a good opportunity to get him to play the game with you one, yeah, one last there time. there you go. Uh, read the next one because I forgot there's an unboxing to do. I Ooh, wanna, I wanna grab okay. It. I don't even know what it is. So. <laughs> uh, Megan Lovett. Uh, people who get uppity about the Steam Deck not being a console are the same people who, um, actually, that tomatoes are fruit. Uh, yes, it's a PC, but most people getting one are going to use it like a console. I know I can switch to desktop mode, but it's got controllers on the side. It's a console. This is true. The Steam, the whole point of the Steam Deck was to be like one device that was like easy to game on, which is what a video game console is. It's it's a it's a console. Yeah, it's a console because it's it's got a unified yeah. uh, marketplace and and games made specifically. If you, for I it. mean, if you want to get technical, the Xbox and the PlayStation are PCs because they use x86 processors. So, yeah, it's it. That's why I'm saying it's this. It, it you get games that are specifically made for it. Yeah. So this I don't want to open too much because I intend to make a video on it. I think. Uh, yeah. but this is. Oh, it's that thing. So there's a bunch of different types of these, yeah. but this is a type of screen for the uh Series Xbox S. Series yeah. S. This isn't the one that was kickstarted like a year ago. I got salty about that. Yeah. Because uh, I kickstarted it, but I I. Only they they had a really complicated Kickstarter, okay. and I accidentally only purchased the case for it. I kickstarted the case for the screen. Okay. So when it finally launched, I got the case, and I was like, "Okay, well, I messaged them, and I was like, okay, well, I want the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this was a mistake.'" And they were like, "You have to purchase it. You don't get the the right. the, the the Kickstarter backer price. Like like I had uh, to pay more. Yeah. I I I lost out on like fifty bucks." So I said, fuck it. I'm just going to keep the case then. Yeah. Now I have a useless $80 <laughs> case because I got mad at them about it. Can you even put it? What goes in the case? Just the- this now. <laughs> this is going to, this this other brand's yeah. thing is going to be in my case because fuck those guys. Uh, this, I have no idea what it is. It says Speed X. I don't know what that okay. means. Sounds like drugs. Could be drugs. Oh, it's more Ape do stuff. <laughs> oh, it's drugs. It's drugs. This I heard about. Uh, I saw some. I think these might be smaller than normal. Uh, these are Apidu, uh SN30 Pros. It's been a while since we've seen these. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, clear green. Ooh. And they also have Will. Atomic Purple. Give me that. Give me that. Yeah. Open that up. Let's see. Uh, okay. Give me I, that. Give me that they might be small. Why would they be small? I saw somebody holding one and they looked smaller than usual. 
Uh, let's see do, what platforms do they work on. Switch, Mac OS, Windows, Steam, Android, Raspberry Pi. So everything. Yep. I have so many of these. This is good though because my old SN30 Pro broke. Okay. So I got the Pro Plus or the Pro 2 Plus, but now I have a regular one. These are good for throwing in your bag, except yeah. for the thumbsticks. I kind of yeah. wish they were recessed That's a little right. more for throwing in the, in the bag. Ooh. This is normal, right? Yeah. yeah, this is normal size. Yeah. Good D pad. We like it. This yep. is good. I, I approve. I could plug it to my MacBook right now. Victor Zanti says, minute. get some more fiber in your diet, Bob. No, I have to. I'm literally on a no, on a low fiber diet. It's the opposite of, yeah. of, of what you'd think I would need. Also, low fiber means unhealthy shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the opposite of what like I can't eat vegetables unless they're cooked. And yeah, it's very strange. That sucks. Um, Draco Saint says, uh. Personally, I just got a 2280 drive enclosure, bought a 2280 drive, and connect it via USB. Most of the games, it doesn't throw a fit about that I have, but it also gets like 2,500 megabits per second to 5,000. So flip-flopping with where it's installed is really quick. I have no idea what you're yeah. talking about. What are you playing your games on? Yeah, it's. Or was this one we were talking about the Wii U? I feel like we might have been talking about Steam Deck. Oh, I don't know. No, you, you have me at a loss, friends. Yeah, I don't remember Draco saying I'm so sorry. I, I don't saw a one about. terabyte laptop hard drive for like really, really good price, like thirty five dollars. I'm like, oh, I'm thinking of buying it and putting it in my PlayStation Three because I was reading an article when I was, all the Wii U stuff was going on. One of the articles I read reminded me of the fact that Sony wants to do the same thing with the PlayStation Three. Shut that would be terrible screen. because you can't play those games anywhere else. Yeah, so I want to. I'm thinking about like upgrading our PlayStation Three to a bigger hard drive and like getting everything on there. Okay. So. Do we have a lot of no, but like, digital because there wasn't a big digital no, but program. like we do have like. Vita stuff can be saved on. I do have a lot of Vita cross buy stuff. That can be saved. But I on bet the hard you, drive. I bet you the hard drive is big enough for it. Yeah, and also too, um, like PlayStation Three games, like they can only be played on PlayStation Three. Mm -hmm. So whatever digital ones we have, I want there. And I have a lot of like PlayStation Plus games. So right. Oh, that's true. You have a fuck ton of PlayStation yeah. Plus stuff. And yeah, there was a time when there were a lot of PlayStation Three, PlayStation Plus stuff. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. EPS 5000 says Animal Crossing New Horizons is great. I have over 2,000 hours into it and still play it to this day. Holy How shit. How many days is 2,000 hours? That's too many. That's too many. It's too much time. It's time to call it. It's time to call it quits. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we're in the chat. Yes. Uh, Make it good. Vita stuff can't be out on PS3 anymore after the newest update. What do you mean? Oh, rats. What does that mean? I have to be. I'll be right back. Can't be put on PS3 anymore? I think it means that, like, after the last update, you can't download it Whoa. to the PS3 and then update it to the Vita. Are you saying that there's no cross? No, 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 no. You can download P Vita games to your PlayStation 3 and then upload them to the v Vita by connecting your Vita to the PS3. Oh, well, yeah. screw that. Just use Wi-Fi. Uh, you can't back up Vita games on your PS3 anymore. Okay, that, that who cares? Just use Wi-Fi like a normal person. Uh, I know you're mainly Nintendo, but did you get the chance to play Resident Evil 4 Remake? No. Uh, Will is a big Resident Evil fan, and he hasn't played it yet. Uh, I do intend on playing it also, but I don't know when the hell I'm going to actually get to it. Uh, Scribe Warward says, It really is a shit diet. Low fiber is fun for taste, but I feel like I'm dying faster eating waffles and hamburgers all the time. Is it Crohn's? Uh, it's probably what i have is um ul ulcerative colitis which is like crohn's um so that's why it's low fiber if if it was stomach ulcers that's high fiber but since it's col colon ulcers it's low fiber uh but i'm eating like i'm not i wouldn't say i'm eating bad i'm still eating like rice and 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 like like lean chicken and like fucking uh eggs and 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 cooked vegetables but sometimes it feels weird because it's like oh wait you mean i like if i have to like go to 
if I have to eat like a burrito, I'm like eating the least healthy parts of the burrito. <laughs> Uh, but it's been getting better. Low fiber. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any idea how ingrained into my head you hungry 60s? <laughs> you hungry? That was E, actually. I didn't even make that up. E made that up. <laughs> Bob, are you doing more Mario streams this week? Yes. Um, Although I might do a Bread and Fred stream sometime. Bread and Fred is this game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, Bennett Foddy's getting over it. It sounds familiar. Uh, the fucking game where this guy is in like a like a like a steel pot, and he has he's a shirtless guy in a steel pot, and he's got a hammer, and he drags himself. He's got to oh, drag yeah, himself, yeah. And, and if you fall, you go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, it's that, but you're two penguins. It's a two player <laughs> game. Okay. It's a platformer. It's just a regular like Mario style platformer. Uh huh. But there's two penguins and they're tied to each other. Okay. So, and you gotta make it all the way. Okay. So imagine New Super Mario Brothers where it's multiplayer, but you're and you know how that's really annoying because you can hit each other yeah. and screw up each other's jumps. Imagine that, but you're tied to each other. Oh, that sounds awful. Yes. So uh it's pretty fun. <laughs> there is a single player to that game where you are tied to a rock. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Scribe of War Scribe of Wormwood. Thank you for the uh, five gifted subs. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm I gotta make a it's supposed to be a lot of fanfare when that happens, but it's a podcast. <laughs> Doesn't uh, whatever. Have you seen that guy who got Mario 64 running on the RG35XX? Yes, I need to do that. Uh that's the Ambernick one, right? Correct. I need to. Bring, it runs like shit. I have to bring my Ambernick to you because I tried booting it up the other day, and all the ROMs I tried, the aspect ratio was completely borked. Okay, on all of them, and I tried fixing them, and nothing worked. I'm pretty sure I updated it so that that wouldn't happen. Okay, but uh, yeah, bring it to me. Yeah, there's definitely a um, keep like like a like a keyboard shortcut to yeah. to, to changing the aspect ratio. Bob, didn't you say you were going to play Persona 5? Uh, yeah. I say a lot of things. <laughs> I got a lot of games I got to play in instead. Uh, what if Sony's ultimate nightmare came true and the exclusivity of COD severely tanked the PlayStation sales? Do you think there is a world where Sony would discontinue PlayStation? No. No. They're uh, too big. Yeah. That. I think, if anything, they would try, they would try to find something else. They would try to push their... First party titles, they would try to push other exclusives that they have. They would try to push Final Fantasy. They would find other ways to leverage the Sony brand. I think there is a perfect storm of scenarios where any of these big game companies can fail, like like at the drop of a hat. But it yeah. has to be the perfect storm of a situation that won't happen with these big studios. No, I th I think if anything, Microsoft might pull out of the console race. You know, especially. If Game Pass takes off the way they want it to, uh, I, and I don't see Sony pulling out, and Nintendo is too stubborn to pull out. Yeah, Nintendo yeah. will stay in gaming, even if they turn into like a small Atari style company. Yeah, they will just keep mm -hmm. doing it like that. Uh, can you upload 3DS Mario Maker Worlds to the Switch? No, no, you cannot. No, you can't even upload them to the Wii U. Bob, will you test the new Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom on the new Switch? What are you talking about? I think they're just asking if you can play Tears of the Kingdom on Switch. I will stream Tears of the Kingdom on, on Switch. Uh, I'm not going to make a video on it or anything, I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't see Microsoft making another Xbox. They'll port Game Pass to other platforms first. I don't know about that. I mean, I, they'll, they'll make another Xbox, but I think the scenario of them dropping out of the console race is much more likely than the other two yeah i think that the, uh there is a reality where they might lean into yeah. streaming instead of making a console but i think that there will still be a box that will yeah play the stuff you know yeah what's this week's video about it is going to be a vlog about uh the games that i played at pax random have you guys ever gotten a collector's edition of a nintendo game just for the 
art albums slash box. I used to get collector's editions specifically for the uh, the art books. Yeah. I, I, I'm a big art book guy, but I haven't done that. I haven't gotten collector's editions in years. Yeah, I mean, I buy most of my games digital now, so there's no reason for me to have collector's editions. Bob, as a graphic designer, what's your thoughts on the new Pepsi logo? I did not know Pepsi had a new logo. I heard about that. I haven't actually seen it, though. Let's look at it right now. I saw like a breakdown of their last new Pepsi logo and people shit on it because they spent all of this time in the like pitch deck talking about uh, all these weird, wacky reasons why they designed uh-huh. it the way that they did. It's like, oh, it's like it, it's it's easy to meme on them, but they got a million dollars to make a fucking dumb logo. Yeah. So, of course, you got to spend all that money trying to rationalize spending a million dollars on a logo yeah. anyway i guess this is the new logo it's it's uh this one yeah i'm looking yeah. at it it's fine it's fine it looks like it kind of looks like like the, an older pepsi logo apparently this has according to me skimming fast company's website it looks like it's trying to do something about like combating the fact that there's a lot of sugar in pepsi i don't like the black text i mean i think that's what it was in the older logos uh, this these cans don't look good i don't think those cans look good uh i don't like it I don't rolling like out in north like america small... this fall uh biggest update is that pepsi uh word mark has been placed back into the company's patriotic uh yin yang globe right where it lives for any child of the 80s and 90s hey that's us hey uh, yet the new brand is anything but a simple nostalgia play. Instead, it's built to distance Sony's association with sugar as black, the same color as Pepsi Zero uh, sugar, cuts through the red, white, and blue palette to bind the brand together. The black starts with the word mark, and then it outlines the globe, and it spills out into the Pepsi design team, refers to as Pulse. I don't hate the the black can. I hate the black text. It looks like the Pepsi text has only ever been black in 1962. Okay. When they're, they yeah. had like a bottle cap design. You know what? I kind of hate all these logos. <laughs> kind of hate their logo to begin with. I think it's really bizarre. I think that the, the, the like little, what do you call it? It's been a while since I've done any actual graphic design. But, but the, the 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 thickness of the p on the bottom is small okay it looks weird it's bizarre i don't like it i hate this uh, uh, but I, but i actually i hate all of their logos i don't think they've ever had a good one the swish is cool yeah that's always been i don't cool. know i don't think about the logo so much when i buy soda i just think like what am i in the mood for pepsi okay coke okay sprite okay no, I, 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 I'm interested in logo stuff. It's not called a descender. That's uh, the bottom part of the P. I'm talking about the bottom part of the swoosh. But I, I'm, I mean, the thickness of the line is called something. Also, if you're trying to like create a logo to like distance yourself from like your sugary brand, I have bad news for you. You're Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, I mean, Coke did it with Coke Zero. Yeah, and Pepsi has a zero. That's what they're doing. Yeah, they're, 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 they're literally the because Pepsi Zero, their color was black, so they put the black back into the logo, so people think of that. Right. Yeah, it's the it's the first thing in in this, yeah. in this list. Anyway, uh, Scribe Warmwood, thanks for the gifted subs, and KHLD, thanks for the prime. Hey Bob, best device for portable Steam Link switched form factor. Ein Odin, probably. Mm. Oh, for streaming. You can do the light one. The Odin light. All right, it's for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on whatever podcast service you prefer. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, you name it, we're there. But no matter where you get your show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. 
Okay. Why don't we go watch Anthony Carboni? He's streaming. Okay. You go watch him. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. What was the last big thing he did? What was the last big uh, Star Wars reveal? Mandalorian premiere? Probably. Maybe. All right. Go watch him. We'll, uh, I'll be on probably Thursday, maybe tomorrow if I'm, if I'm feeling, if I'm feeling particularly good, <laughs> but who knows? Uh, we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.